Friday again. It's Friday, and it's it's actually a a fun podcast or webinar. I guess I get my terminology mixed up all the time. Hey, Mike, are you there? I am. You are there. You can talk a little louder because I can barely hear you. Oh well, hello everybody. I didn't want to yell, <laughs> but I'm here. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, this is a webinar on streaming audio and entertainment, and I think you yeah, have to enjoy the enjoy the content. Um, start out with a little music, a little appropriate. It's called Morning Dance. Check it out by Spiral Jarrow. I love that saxophone, Earl. I just love these guys. Um, so I, I think it's pretty appropriate, too. The song is called Morning Dance. And I think um, that in Daejeon, Korea, Jenny is dancing around her living room as we play this because she's just joined us as a panelist. Hey, how doing? Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. Sorry about that. I was muted. Well, here you are. Welcome. Uh, here I am. Been up for two hours, haven't you? Actually, I have. <laughs> um, I don't think the lady ever sleeps. Now, before we start, let's go ahead and uh, do a little housekeeping. Just a couple things. So we've been getting questions about how things are going in pandemic land. Um, the state of Texas has lifted, uh, has opened up some other states, and the, the city of Austin has said, uh, not so fast. You're going to be closed until uh, we've, they've pushed it out to May 30th, that we're not allowed to go and conduct business as usual in our physical brick and mortar location. But that's okay. It's all about staying safe and, and, um, staying well. The other piece of business that I want to mention is that at the beginning of this month, Hymns launched a new promotion that's going to last all the way until the end of June. And I think you're going to appreciate it. If you know anybody who's in the market for one of the, the premium Hymns note-taking devices like the QBrail XL, Polaris, Polaris Mini, we actually um, don't have them on sale. <laughs> well, that's not that's no fun. But what we do have is an hour of free training so that's kind of a you know, discount right there, <laughs> right? And then we have a free product maintenance agreement, otherwise known as a PMA, which is in and of itself a $650 value um, extended warranty. So um, in that you get a loan unit if you should have to go in for repair. Uh, what else does that give you? It gives you um, a, a complimentary cleaning annually, other things, um, and it actually has, it actually has a one-time accidental damage waiver. Am I right about that? So, well, you don't want to deliberately do anything to it, but we won't ask any questions if there's physical damage to it, it needs to be replaced if you purchase the PMA, which you don't have to purchase because it's free until the end of June. All right. So, so, so this is a great value, but it just oh. cracked me up the way you did that because you said they're not on sale. I, I don't know that I've ever heard a promotion start out negatively, <laughs> but right. in fact, it is a really great value. Oh, so let me turn off my speech on my Mac. This is carrying over. Voice over off. I think the world heard me to say to turn down my mic a little tiny bit. Is that what I heard? No, actually, you're okay. Okay. You're good. Cool. All right. Well, Jenny, this is your gig because you're the gadget chick. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got all the things all known to man. And, uh, and, and we're, we're just going to talk about all the things that you can do with Polaris and uh, entertainment in this time where we are all looking to be entertained, but not always necessarily at webinars. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <clears throat> well, good morning or good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. Good afternoon, however it works. Um, he is right. I am a gadget junkie. I love all of my gadgets and I love all these different services and I get bored very easily. So I need to, you know, switch and do different things all the time. And so 
<clears throat> one of the things that we're talking about today, or the main topic that we're talking about today, is how to keep yourself entertained. Um, but one thing I want to point out is that with all of my gadgets, we're pointing all this out, how, how to do this on Polaris, because Polaris really does have some special interfaces and some special features that make this just a little bit less hectic, that make this more accessible, more intuitive. And so the last thing you want to do when you want to be entertained, you don't want to have to work at it. You want it to be easy, you want it to be smooth. And so what we're going to do this morning is to actually show you sort of the Polaris advantage when it comes to entertaining yourself at home during this crisis, when you're bored and you just need something to stimulate your brain or your senses, whatever works. Um, so that's what we're doing today. And although, yes, this is sort of my, I'm hosting this, actually, um, Thomas and Earl and Mike are going to help me out. Um, Thomas is at the controls always, Tom, our Thomas Simpson. We're grateful for that. He keeps things running smoothly. Earl also co-hosts. So we've, we've got Earl Harrison, who already introduced himself, and of course, Mike Tyndall. Um, so it's our, our standard crew here today, and we all usually work as a team, and we will be doing that today. So what we're going to do today is demo how Polaris helps you stream entertainment services. So music, um, news, movies, videos, entertainment, however, you know, you, whatever you might be looking for. Um, we won't show everything because many of the concepts cross over to whatever you might be using, but we hope that if we show you a few different services that um, you'll be able to apply these concepts also to others, and we've also played with other services, so if you have questions about how things work, we can probably answer those. So we're going to do this. First, we're going to start with a couple of music services. So we'll have Earl show Pandora, and then Mike is going to show Apple Music. Um, we'll go back to Earl then for Disney Plus, because that's, of course, the new thing now and in fashion. And um, at the end, I will do a little bit longer demo of Ciro on the Polaris. And for those of you who um, are familiar with this or maybe haven't gotten back to that in a while, I'm sure that many of you have heard of it because it's been in, in our community forever, but they have really stepped up their game and stepped up their content. And it is so responsive and accessible on Polaris. And during this time, what's really, really great about it is that they just take content from so many sources that in addition to having accessible descriptive videos and all that, it's just a really great source for getting entertainment content because it has such a variety of things and really grabs things from everywhere, from Apple TV, from Disney+, Plus, Amazon Video, Netflix, um, sources in the UK, regular TV, you name it. They just have such a variety of stuff, and I will um, show that and point that out later in addition to radio and news services. So. It's really a one-stop shop, so I'm going to save that one for the end. But we'll start with Earl and Pandora. Earl, are you ready to take it away? Uh, uh, yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't know I was going to be first, but I'm ready. I'm going to go ahead and turn my speech on. Voice on. File manager, um, F. Word processor, W. All righty. Notepad, N. Word processor, W. All right. Yeah, I am uh, finding the channel where my speech, my file manager F. Polaris Word lives. There w. it is. That's the problem. I'm <laughs> I'm a little over the top with the equipment down here. We've got a 24 channel mixer to, to do two things, three things. Um, okay. Yes. Let me go into. I'm going to go into to Zoom actually. So from my main menu, Audio Lab. Um, I'm going to press Z. Zoom. Well, first I press A for all. Applications. I'm going to go into Zoom, where I think I'm Zoom, logged in. Information. Already. Button. Your connection is encrypted. Enter key to select. Button QA. Press the enter key to run. And okay, yes, and I am in the meeting, so I'm going to go ahead. Start my video. Enter key and to select. Show, share. Button enter share. key to select. Button photo. Enter key um, to select. My audio with you. Button screen. Enter and key to select. rather, I'm already sharing my audio. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. Zoom. And it's probably worth mentioning that I am actually, what's carrying my audio is the mixing console that I'm, I'm going through. Um, not anything on the Polaris, not an external speaker, anything like that. Um, uh, because there are some devices that, that do allow you to carry the audio, like a PC or a Mac, uh, 
and some other devices, but Android for some reason doesn't allow you to do that. And that's not just unique to the Polaris. App manager. Okay, so I am, do you see my screen now? Are we sharing screen? Thomas? Uh, yep, I can see it just fine. All right, cool. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm in my <clears throat> all apps program still. Pandora. I just press the letter P. Now I should preface this by saying there are, as mentioned earlier, many ways of doing things. And we wanna make sure that we have the easiest way of accessing things related to leisure and entertainment and things like that. Um, I share a Pandora account with my wife, Kelly, and we have got just a crazy number of channels out there. And when I went to log into my own Pandora account, I've got like the $5 um, no commercials subscription. I couldn't log in and because it was tied to an a email address that doesn't exist anymore, I had to create a new Pandora account. So it's like starting all over again. But the, the nice thing about these services, um, you know, Pandora is always trying to be Spotify. Spotify is trying to be Pandora. It's, it's gone beyond in the case of Pandora that just being a radio streaming service. Now you are able to download content directly to your device. Um, so if you have the paid subscription, uh, obviously they're paying, they're, you know, paying royalties to artists, somebody is somewhere, because you're able to now download content and not, not just albums and songs and things like that, but somehow you can download a radio station and listen to it offline as well. So you, once you get the content that you want downloaded to your device, you can actually go offline with it and go out into the yard and not worry about having a bad internet connection, things like that. Um, not sure how that works Photos. yet, but Okay, so I think I mean let's see here where am I? Go back and Final Manager all apps, Audio Lab. Pandora. Pandora. Enter on that. And thought it was there. Image Pandora logo. Okay. My collection. So here I've actually was in here. I'm not I have no idea what's playing right now. Um, I'm turning the my collection. Off. Embracing the silence. So th this is actually a radio station that I created um, called Ginny Owens. We have a good friend that I've had the privilege of playing music with um, before. She's a Christian singer-songwriter. And um, I, this is not her, but this is her radio station. And it's being actually played offline at the moment. So I'm going to actually look for the pause button here. Actually, I'm going to press and put my face back on the floor and right, down just started out bailed me out of there but it's still playing so. okay, so playing. So right now I'm going I'm completely yeah, I'm braille because I've got the music going and um, I'm just trying to see how I can get back to I didn't expect to come in here I want to go back to my um, my, my music oh, there's a pause button will that work yeah that'll work I suppose I, I just had to press P there, but I was just tabbing around, and so much of this working in Android devices is just tabbing around. Um, Stop share, button enter key. So I'm going to go ahead and. My collection. What, what's interesting about when you're sharing your screen with the Polaris, it, it is actually the zoom sh stop share is actually superimposed on the app that you're working with. And so it, I, I think it kind of has a little effect. Now playing enter key. On how things are going. But navigation menu um, enter key to select. So there's now paying, playing. Now playing enter key to select. My collection. Then I want to go to my collection. Stop share. Button enter key to select. My collection. Okay. Now playing enter key to select. Button navigation menu enter key to select. There's a navigation menu. Let's go in there. Menu. Stop share. Button enter key. Pandora logo enter key to select. My collection. Settings. Offline mode enter key to select. Switch on, press the enter key to toggle. Okay, so I see offline mode, switch on. So I, I am offline, it off. seems, right? Pandora. 
My music button recently played. Now I see my music recently played. Button search enter key to select. Search. Recently default station art. Ginny Owens radio station. Button play enter key to select. Album art. Gratitude. Earth. Wind fire enter key to select. And I've got some other things here too. So if I wanted to just go ahead and do a search. Button search enter key to select. For something I could just come in search. here. If it'll let me. And let's say that I want to look for that. Um, I'll name an artist. The, how about uh, the Eagles? I'm a 70s kind of guy, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and I've, I've typed it in. And as I'm typing, it should just be populating. Button clear, query, enter key. Listen all enter uh, as I type, like most of the uh, Android apps that you can come across. Listen artist, enter key to select. Um, I can select artist. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a song called Eagles. I'm looking for artist. Edit. Button clear, query, enter. List all, enter key to select. List all. List artist, enter key to select. List songs, enter key to select. List stations, enter key. List podcast, enter key. List playlist, enter key to select. List albums, enter key to select. Eagles, artist, enter key to select. So Eagles, artists. Eagles of death metal. Artist, enter key to select. Eagles of death metal. Eagles, UK. Artist, enter key to select. Eagles, holiday. Artist, enter key to select. JD Glisson, enter key to select. Okay. So the only thing I've got with the Eagles on it so Eagles, far. Holiday, artist enter key, Eagles, UK, art, Eagles of Death Metal, artist enter key, Eagles, artist enter key to select. That would be interesting, Eagles. Now playing enter key, to, now playing enter key to select. Button navigate up enter key to select, button search enter key to select. Play, top songs enter key to select. Pause, top songs enter key to select. Okay, so now. I'm listening to Hotel California, one of my favorite songs Play. from Pop them. Songs, enter key to select. And um, so it was a little floundering around, but I, I can tell you it's probably a little easier interface than, um, oh, for example, the experience on the, um, on the iPhone or some of the other things. But one, one nice thing is that when you, you set up your Pandora and you go and you, you've got these thumb up, thumbs up buttons, thumbs down, you can say, hey, I like this song, and it'll play it again. Um, and if you do thumbs down, you you won't be bothered with it again. And like I said, I share a, an account with my wife. And if I don't want to be at my Polaris, and I don't want to, you know, I've got these things called the echo in my throughout my house. And I can just say, Alexa, play the Eagles on Pandora. Eagles Radio from Pandora. Well, that's Eagles Radio. And so they play the same song I was just listening to, in fact, plus um, all the other songs that fit into that genre of the day. Alexa, stop. So basically, I can program uh, what I want to hear on my account, uh, even though I'm using a separate account on my Polaris uh, if I logged into the same account as Kelly and I have, I could basically say, I don't ever want to hear this song again. I won't play it again. Um, so it just gets smarter and smarter as you go. And that's really all I wanted to cover on Pandora today. So we'll go ahead and bring Jenny back. Sorry, again, I had to unmute myself. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I was trying, I needed to close a window. I was getting all kinds of truck sounds that I didn't think you guys wanted to hear that. So anyway, I apologize. I am returning. So one thing that I wanted to, to ask you, and I know you're going to show this in Disney Plus. So you were tapping around, or I, I guess I wanted you to point out, you were tapping around and all that, but the second time you actually were able to pause it easily. So talk about how the Polaris interface is different from the iPhone in that sense? I mean, I know the answer already, but you know. Well, I mean, I, I, as I'm tabbing around, or I, I could do first letter navigation, and right now, actually, I see a play button, um, and I could just go ahead and play it by pressing the rounding key above it. Is that what you're going to get at? And, or, yes. Yeah. Um, so for example, sure. um, when you were looking for artists and uh, eagles and all of that, so what's great about that is when you know where you're going, this actually is a very quick process. He was tabbing around to sort of show you how you can access the different controls and all of that. But it can actually be a very quick process with first letter nav. And that's one thing I wanted to point out is that if you do know where you're going, this can actually be super fast and super easy in a way that it's not with a touch screen because he could have just pressed E to get to Eagles, you know, that first result and jumped there quickly. 
that's that's actually right. right. And you know, if, for example, well, also when when I came into the Pandora app, I had forgotten that I had um, exited at a time when it was playing Ginny Owens radio offline. <laughs> so when I came back in, I said it, it decided it would take you know, <clears throat> where it left off. Sure. Before, so kind of caught me at <laughs> kind of a disadvantage. No, no, it's all good, and that's <laughs> um, that's something that we want to point out to with with all Android apps when you're first there or if you're not sure where you land you do have to explore a little bit and that's something that you need to not be afraid of doing um, it's not always going to be that way it's going to depend on how familiar you are with the app where you land so you can always find what you need depending on where you land you're able to tab around and explore exactly as he did um, but when you do know where you're going you're able to, to really jump there with First Letter Nav, and of course, we'll continue to show that. And Mr. Mike Tyndall will show us next a little bit about Apple Music. Again, we're gonna use some of the same concepts, but we want to show you that these apps are very accessible on Polaris and very easy to use. So Mike, are you ready? I am ready, yes. Uh, I am ready. Knock me off. Button search enter key to select. Um, Pearl, search did you stop select. your screen share? No, yeah. Button navigate up enter key just now playing enter key to select my collection backstage stop share button enter key to select zoom current view is active speaker double tap to hide I, I, I should be stopped should have stopped sharing now all right so I will start my share here There we go. Thomas, do you see my screen there? Yep, you're good. Very good. So I'm going to turn on my voice. Voice on. Zoom. And I'm going to press uh, F1 to go to the file manager. <clears throat> file manager, F. Yeah. So some of the things that Earl and Jenny was talking about, I will just kind of echo. One thing I want to point out, when you're using an Android app, F3 is your tab key. That's the key just beside the little oval button that's beside your space bar on the Polaris. That's the F3 key. Pressing that will tab you forward. If you want to go the other direction, the command is space with F3 to tab you in a backward direction. And one of the things that, you know, as we kind of also mentioned, if you're using an iPhone, um, especially if you're doing, you know, navigating with the screen. You have to flick, 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 flick to find what you're looking for. And then, of course, with your finger, you double tap and that activates that control. And first letter navigation when you're using a device such as the Polaris is so beneficial because it simply allows you to do anything that you want to do quickly when you know where you're going. But as Jenny said, do not ever be afraid to just tab, 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 back tab your way through as you're looking through an app, because that is really the way that you're going to learn what's available in that app. Another thing that you're going to often find when you're in an app is a button called the navigate up button. And if you press enter on that button, what it basically will do is take you back a level within the app. So I like Apple Music. Um, I've used it for a long time. But what I like about it is, is that I can use my Mac, use my Polaris, use my HomePods, anything I want. And I can simply play songs. I can add albums to my library. I can download music directly to my device. Um, but I just quickly, we're not going to spend a lot of time because I also want us to cover other things today, but I'm going to press A for all apps. And the first app you're going to hear by default, because it's the first one in my list, is Apple Music. Apple Music. And I'm going to press enter on it. Listen now, new episode, Kalani, the desk. So the first thing I have up is a list of things that Apple Music just kind of wants me to listen to. Well, I'm not wanting to do that. I want to find something in particular. So I'm going to type the letter S to find the search button. 
Button C, all enter key to select. That was C all, so I'll press S again. Button C, all enter key to select. And I'll press S again. Button search, enter key. To and select. there's my search button. So what might you think from there? You may think if you press S a couple times and you see the C all button, that it's on the same button, but it isn't. And the only way you're going to know that is by tabbing around. Um, so that's why I'm urging people, make sure that you just, you know, tab around an app at first to kind of get used to it. I'm going to press enter here. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Edit box disabled Apple Music. Press enter to enter or edit text. Edit box disabled Apple Music. Press enter. So I'm now edit text. in an edit box. I'm going to press enter here. And I see a cursor. There's a Ronnie Millsap song that I like, and a lot of people may not even know it's around, but I like the song. It's called Oh Linda. So I'm just going to do O H O H O L I N D A Linda. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. I'm going to type T for top result. Add the library. Add the library. Button C, all enter key to select. O, Linda Explicit, Gordon Lightfoot, United Artist Collection, the, no, add the library. O, Linda Explicit, Gordon Lightfoot, Lightfoot, 1966, enter, add the library. Add the library. Ed, edit box, disabled O, Linda, press enter to enter or edit. Text. So I'm going to narrow o, this Linda. down by typing Ronnie Millsap. O, N, N, I, E, Ronnie, N, I, L, S, A, E. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Edit box disabled. Olinda Ronnie Millsap. Press enter. Olinda Ronnie Millsap. Enter key to select. Mildred. Enter key to select. Olinda. Enter key to select. Milk J. Enter key to select. All red. Enter key to select. Justin Bieber. Enter key to select. Edit box disabled. Olinda Ronnie Millsap. Press enter to enter or edit text. Olinda Ronnie Millsap. Enter key to select. Button navigate up. Okay, now I'm going to press T for. Button navigate up. Enter key. Edit box. Disable Bill Linda Ronnie Millsap. Press enter. Button clear query. Enter key to select. Recent heading. Trending heading. Button clear. Enter key to select. Bill Linda Ronnie Millsap. Enter key to select. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Edit box. Disable Bill Linda Ronnie Millsap. Button clear query. Enter. Recent heading. Trend button clear. Enter key to select. Bill Linda Ronnie Millsap. Enter key. Milder. Enter key to select. Bill Linda. Enter key to select. Milk J. Enter key to select. All red. Enter key to select. Justin Bieber, enter key to select. Kelly, enter key to select. Now enter key to select. We're going to try this again. I'm going to press uh, S for search. And I don't see search, so I'll type an in. Button navigate up. Navigate enter up. Key. Listen, listen now. Billy's show is back. And this time now we're going to type S. Button C, all enter key to select. Button C, all enter key to select. Button search, enter key to select. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Edit box, disabled songs, albums, lyrics, and more. Press enter to enter or edit text. Recent heading, trending heading. Edit box, disabled Apple Music. Press enter to enter. Okay, or now edit I pressed enter on that, so I'm just going to type Millsap. Six N I L A A P Millsap. A O L I F E A Linda. And press enter. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Edit box disabled. Millsap Olinda press enter to enter or edit text. Button navigate up. Edit box disabled. Button clear query enter key. Recent heading. Trending heading. Button clear enter key to select. Olinda Ronnie Millsap enter key to select. Milder enter key to select. Olinda enter key to select. Milk all red enter key to select. And? Milk J enter key to select. Olinda enter key to select. Olinda enter key to select. I'm pressing enter there. I, I did this earlier today. Milk um, enter key to select. I am. All red enter key to select. I see old red. I searched for him earlier as well, but we're not going to. Justin Bieber enter key to select. Not... Kelly enter key to select. Nev enter key to select. Monibag yo enter key. So let's select. go back. S for, uh, I'm sorry, in for navigate up. Button disabled next track. Playing all red enter key to select. Button play enter key to select. So we're going to do in. Button disabled next track. Edit box disabled. Oh, Linda, press enter to enter or edit text. I think uh, space will bring it up. Now enter key to select. Button disabled. Next track. 
Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Listen so we're going to enter on that. Ellie's show is back, and this time she's brought her phone. So we're going to do S for search. Button C, all enter key to select. Button C, all enter key to select. Button search, enter key to select. Button well, navigate up. Enter key to select. Edit box, disabled songs, albums. We'll Edit look for. Enter or M. I. L. S. A. D. Mill Sam. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Add the library. Any day now, explicit. Song by Ronnie Mill Sam. Okay, so now I see any day now. Olinda, enter key to select. And I found Olinda. I, I see what I was doing. I was capitalizing it, and it's actually not capitalized. So I'm going to press enter on Olinda. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. Playing all red, enter key to select. Button play, enter key to select. Button pause, enter key to select. Button play, enter key to select. Button navigate up. Enter key to select. List, listen now. Billy show is back, and this time she's brought her button. See all enter key to select. Button see all enter button search enter key to select. Button navigate up. Enter so key if I go to edit box, the edit box, songs, box, albums, lyrics, and more, press enter. And I'll, 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 button navigate up. Enter key to select. Edit box disabled. Millsap press enter to add the library. Any day now. Explicit. So if I see any Millsap. day now, this is a song. If I press enter on it. Any day now, explicit. Song by Ronnie Nelson. Inside, 1982, enter key to select. Now, if I want to pause this, I can press P. Playing any day now, enter key to select. Any day now. Button pause, enter key to select. So I can pause Button that. Key to select. If I wanted to add this to my library. Button disabled, next track. I could type in A. List Apple Music selected, enter key to select. Add the library. I see add to library. Now, if I do space with F3. The best of Ronnie Millsap explicit album by Ronnie Millsap, country, 2019. Enter That's key. the entire album. Add the library. Any day now, explicit. Song by Ronnie Millsap. I press tab to get that. If I press tab again. Download. I could download it. Button C, all enter key to select. Or I could see many, many more songs by him. So once things are downloaded, you can then go into your library. So if I press N to navigate up. Button disabled, next track. Button navigate up, enter key to select. Listen, listen now, Billy show is back. And this if I type L for library. Library, enter key to select. I can press enter there. For you enter key to select. Browse, enter key to select. Radio enter key to select. Playing any day now enter key to select. Button play enter key to select. Button disabled next track. Stop share. Button enter key to select. Library. Button only show music on this device enter key to select. Switch off press the enter key to toggle. Cast button. Disconnected enter key to button search enter key to select. Button more options enter key to select. List recently added enter key to select. And so we have things like recently added. List playlists, enter key to select. Playlists. List artists, enter key to Artists. Select. So if I want to go to recently added, for example, I could type R. Radio, enter key to select. List recently added, enter key to select. If I press enter on that. List playlists, enter key to select. List art, list albums, enter key to select. List songs, enter key to select. List TV, ampersand, movies enter inside, Ronnie Millsap enter key to select. The, one of the newest things I have added to my list is an album by Ronnie Millsap called Inside. Today's Country, Apple Music Country enter key to select. Action 1 SCR speech enter key to select. Today's Country Inside. So if I Ronnie press Millsap enter on Inside. Inside, button Ronnie Millsap enter key, download enter key to select. Button more options enter key to play enter key to select. Play shuffled enter key to select. One, any day now enter key to select. Download. Two, inside enter key. So to let's select. say I want to hear that song. If I press enter. Button navigate up enter key to select. I can press P to pause it. Play enter key to select. Playing inside enter key to select. Button pause enter key to select. 
He tries for the honesty. Button play enter key to select. So as you can see there, there are many, many ways to find things that you um, want to look for. And navigating around with first letter navigation is very easy to do um, when you're using the Polaris. Now, for example, I'm going to type in to go navigate up. Button next track enter key to select. And again. Button navigate up enter key to select. But now what I want to show you is I was looking for the play button earlier. So if I type the letter P. Play enter key to select. I see play. But that's not necessarily a button that I'm looking for. So I can't be thrown off guard by that. If I type P again. Playing inside enter key to select. And press P one more time. Button play enter key to select. You heard button play. That's what I'm looking for. So that's why I'm trying to explain and reiterate that if you tab around an app a lot, get really familiar with it so that when you're using first letter navigation, um, you know exactly what you're looking for. So I'm now going to do space with Z to close out. Wait, wait, wait. Don't do that yet. Okay. Well, I, did, but I, <laughs> I actually want you to try something else that you may not even know about that is a sure. very useful tool. So sure. what I what I want you to do is actually go back to your song list in that album. Sure. List artist center key to select. List all list songs enter key to select. List TV so doesn't, inside. It doesn't matter. You can go to any song list. It doesn't make any difference. I'm there. Okay. okay. So, oops. Okay, go ahead. You're so good. In the song list. Okay. So what I want you to do is on one of those songs, I want you to press backspace, space, enter. Okay. Zero one general description enter action one SCR speech enter key to today's country Apple music country inside Ronnie Millsap enter key to select. Okay, so you actually need to be in. Yeah, I'm I'm going into the. Inside okay. Ronnie Millsap. I wasn't Ronnie actually in select. the album, but I am now. Play shuffle one hit download. Okay, right there. Press. So I'm at the song. Any day, no enter key. Yep. I'm gonna press space inner backspace. Is that what you said? Yep. Oh no, it didn't. Enter key to select. Button play enter key to select. Button on your desktop enter key to select. Download enter key to select. Delete from library enter key to select. Okay, you are actually in the right place. I'm not yeah. sure why it started playing, but if you can. <laughs> okay, go ahead and pause it. I'm trying. I know. Yes, but I do see what you're at. What you want me to show? So, yeah, when you are. When you are in this song list and you press space, enter backspace, it gives you a lot of choices there as if you were to tap and hold or right. right click on the computer. So you can do things like remove it from your library. Uh, you can shuffle it. You can, you can do a lot of different things. Add it to a playlist. That's the biggest thing add that I would Add the playlist is the big one. Yeah. So you can certainly make your own playlists. And when you make your own playlists on one device, you can set it up so that all of your playlists are synchronized over all of your devices, all inside Apple Music, and it's wonderful. So I'm not going to press F1. Final manager. Thank F1. you for that, Jenny. And I'm going to press... Task name, Zoom. Enter on Zoom. Thought it was. 61. Close. Hot button OK. Press the enter key to run. Stop share. Button enter key. And I'm not going to stop my screen from sharing. Application failed. Please try again. Oh. Button OK. Press the enter key to run. Zoom. Start my video. Enter key to share. Button enter key. And I think I actually did stop my share. Thomas, did I stop my share? Yes, you did. Okay, very good. Okay. Jenny, take it away. <laughs> okay, just a second. I'm going to share my own screen. And but you guys can see there. Things have to be spelled right, capitalized or uncapitalized. So the thing is, is that when you're doing this, there's no right or wrong. Just enjoy the apps, play with them, 
see what works, what doesn't, but really get to know the app by just tabbing through it in the app you're using. So one of the reasons that I had him do the backspace space enter is that I wanted to point out, we do have keyboard equivalents to things like double tap and hold. You can do space enter to um, double tap, um, which is sometimes a little bit different than actually pressing enter. Enter is a, a keyboard equivalent. So there are times in Android apps where the enter key doesn't actually do what you want it to. So we do have a direct double tap equivalent, which is space enter, and a double tap and hold equivalent, which is space backspace and enter. And um, that is useful because you want to be able to do these same functions that you can do on your phone when you are trying to interact with the context menus, etc. And I just wanted to point out that that is available also on Polaris. So you are able to control and define, um, like I said, what you're looking for. And as he explained, when you create playlists, they are synchronized across. I actually just recently revitalized my Mac and managed to upload all of my local content. Um, so what's really amazing is that I just logged in under my Polaris and now all of my local content that I had stored on my Mac is available on my Polaris as well because it synchronizes across the libraries. So it's, it's really unique, but it's a lot easier for me to search for it on my Polaris than it is on my Mac. Um, so I actually appreciate that. So I'm actually going to show something different. Um, this is actually a blindness service. Oh, you know what? Jenny, are you still with us? Oh, There's Jenny. Are you there? We are here. Okay. Um, actually, I was. Earl, are you ready to go first? I'm. I'm sorry, I kind of forgot my own order. Uh, are you ready to do Disney Plus, or would you yeah, like me to go uh, ahead? Uh, um, are you hearing me okay right now? We yep. are. Okay, so I'm just pressing space to unmute myself and let me go ahead and unmute it. Current yeah, share. Double tapping my toolbar. And I'm actually sharing and I need to stop because I Okay, am I with you? Okay, you I've stopped. Current, current I'm either with you or am I against you? Right? Word right. processor, W. All right. Let so me do my speech, sorry. All righty. So yeah, I can do Disney Plus. Um okay. I mean, great excuse to you know, call playing with Disney no Plus in. work this week. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and press A for all applications. Audio now, first thing I have in my all applications is something called Audio Lab, which is an interesting uh, sound editing program that I've yet to learn how to master. If I press D here, Disney, or even yet to learn how to use, I'm going to go ahead and press um, the yeah, first thing in my applications list with the letter D, starting with the letter D is Disney. So of course, as usual, first letter navigation just carries throughout the entire system, mostly. And I'm, hey oh, Earl, would you mind I, sharing I, your screen? Scare my, scare my screen. Right? Perfect. Scare my sheen. All apps A. Let me do that. Good plan. Okay. I'm gonna, I forget, you know, that's a sighted thing, sharing. File manager. Screens, F. you know. Audio lab. <laughs> Zoom. I'll go in here. Current view is active speaker. Double tap to high toolbar. Hymns Incorporated. Current view is active speaker. Double tap to high toolbar. Hymns Incorporated. Um, Three, raised hand. View participants who raised the hand. Ten, enter key to select. Um, button zoom. Meeting information. Button. Your button QA. Press the enter key to okay, run. I'm looking for my button share. Press the enter key. Reporting. Audio. Disconnected. Start my video. Enter key to select. Chair. Button. Enter there key to select. Button. Photo. Enter key to select. Screen as button screen enter key to select and zoom and it should be sharing now, right? Yep, you're good to go. Now that I'm sharing my screen, you can see that file manager, F. um, you know, I can navigate the menus and all that stuff. Is, is my mic sounding okay? Or is it a little hot? Uh, to you guys, um, um, so I'm gonna go once again into the all audio lab programs and press D. You're actually, perfect. Sorry, the, okay. the delay, but you're perfect. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, man. Chucks. Um, so I'm in home enter key loading Disney and I'm on the home. Let's see, it says home enter key to select. 
And um, before I go ahead and, and show how to, you know, find movies and, and see them, I got really excited when this Disney Plus um, app came. I think as millions of people did, I think wasn't around like the holidays last year. Because there are so many things that people wouldn't think of Disney about, like the, um, the Marvel series, um, the, uh, what else? Um, Star Wars and things like that. So just a lot. Of, there's just a lot of content here. But what's nice about it is that you can get it all, all the stuff audio described, and that's the beauty of it. Now, again, I'm sharing my screen, but when I start to play a movie, you will see that the movie, um, the action on the movie visually, will not play here, because what do you call that, Jenny? Digital media rights? Did you digital? <laughs> Is it did your digital rights media something like that? There's a they, they don't want you to share across Zoom um, because you know which, all the copyright stuff. They don't want you to be able to record it and distribute it and all that kind of stuff. But what you can do with the Polaris is connect it to a smart TV or a monitor directly with an HDMI cable. I tested this earlier, and um, it that does work. So if you want to, you know, be the 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 person who is providing the entertainment um, you can use a direct you know an HDMI cable or to the to a TV um, or a monitor and that does work unfortunately when you cast it casts the audio but you don't get the the visual so what I mean by cast is when you send it over wirelessly directly to a smart TV um, unfortunately it does not does not show the movie the only way you can show a movie is by um, with the Polaris is by connecting directly to a smart TV with a HDMI cable. So if anybody finds a way around that, let me know. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and again we're going to tab around. That's like we do with their third, search enter key to select third party apps. And I see search press enter to select. Edit box disabled search press enter to enter or edit text. And I again, I'm in uh, before I search, why don't, why don't I just go ahead and tab around because I think you're going to see that the Chronicles of Narnia, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe enter key to select. That's the last thing I search for. The Chronicles of Nar Narnia. Part 68 enter key to select. The Chronicles of Narnia. And there, are some, key to select. there are some apps that um, originals that are, enter key to some select. Some buttons and controls that are not labeled in this this app, but uh, they they rear their ugly heads very rarely. Movies enter key to select. And I'm just going to, I went back to the home screen, basically the main screen, and I'm just going to tab around it. Series enter key to select. Let you hear. The Simpsons enter key to select. The Simpsons. Star Wars, the Skywalkers. Saga enter key to select. Darth Vader enter key to select. Disney through the decades enter key to select. So there's just a lot of stuff in here. Frozen enter key to select. High School Musical enter key to select. Disney Channel Original Movies enter. Forky asks a question enter key. Princesses enter key to select. Spider-Man enter key to select. Home enter key to select. I'm not even sure how I got Search here. enter key to select. Downloads enter key to select. More options, access, watch list, settings, and change profiles. Enter key to select. So access, watch list, settings, and profiles. Stop share, button, enter key to select. Button search icon, and, enter and key to select. you can see there's actually a stop share button that's imposed by uh, on here by the, the Zoom app in case I just want to quickly stop share my screen. Edit box, disabled search, press uh, enter to enter or edit text. Explore. Originals, enter key to select. So. Movies, enter key to select. Series, enter key to select. Let's go ahead and. and um, Movies, enter key to select. Originals, enter key to select. Explore. Originals enter key to select. Movies enter key to series enter key to select. The Simpsons enter key to select. I just select. don't know what I want to watch. We're here. Let's just go ahead and watch The Simpsons, huh? Shall we? Button back enter key to select. Button back enter key to select. Oh. The Simpsons predict enter key to select. You know what? The, this is a series, a TV series. I'm going to bail out of this because I discovered that because The Simpsons has been running. How many years has The Simpsons been running? For something like since 1984. Button search icon enter key to there select. There is some content on here that is not audio described, and some of those old Simpson episodes that I love so much. Um, Legacy enter key to select. Are, are, do not have audio. So I'm, I just pressed uh, space E a couple times just to go up a couple of levels within the app because I, I didn't realize that I was down so deep in the app already. I should have just started a new session. Disney enter key to select. Um, Pixar enter key to select. But So I'm back at where you would come in here. If you were to just launch the app, and we hear Disney enter key that to we've select. got legacy enter key to select legacy Disney enter key to that's select. new. I'm not sure what that is. We got Disney content Pixar enter key to select Pixar Marvel enter key to select um, the Marvel series. We just watched um, 
We just watch Iron Man or something like that. Star Wars Enter Key to Select. Which was totally audio described. National Geographic Enter Key to Star Select. Wars, uh, okay, so National Geographic. So Star let's Wars just go Enter, back. Enter, Pixar Enter Key let's to go select. back to Search. Star Wars Enter Key to Select. Uh, search Enter Key to Select. Press Enter on that. And right from edit here. Box disabled Search Press Enter to enter or edit text. Why don't I just type in the word Narnia, N-A-R-N-I-A. And like with so many applications, as you're typing, the, uh, the, op the choices that are available to match are populating in the app Button here, all so. Button clear query and the Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, so, file, data, data, com, Disney, Disney, plus files, offline images, 126,524,407.png, so 2008. The Chronicles of Narnia, and if I wanted to, I could read in contracted braille or uncontracted braille, whatever I want, all the information that anybody else could see um, if they were you know, using a, an Apple TV or an iPad or an iPhone. By the way, we have an Apple TV and we have, um, you know, of course I've got this stuff on my iPhone and I have on my Polaris. I can tell you that this user interface, uh, this, uh, on the Android platform, or in this case on the Polaris, is far and away the cleanest of them all because I can tell you I get, I, I can go down a rabbit hole with, um, with Apple TV and that remote. Button clear query enter key. Even, even with, a, with, a, with a keyboard connected to it, I get quite. The Chronicles of Narnia, lost. Prince Caspian, file. The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch in the Wardrobe, right. file, data, data, com, Disney, Disney, plus files, Let's offline images, 136 million, button back, enter key, image, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch in the Wardrobe. And the beautiful thing about Play, it enter is, key to select. is that. Stop share, button, enter key to select. Now, a logo, Walt Disney Pictures. A glowing pinpoint of light arcs over the orange outline of a castle with spires and flags. I mean, you see, we, as blind folks, we can have a listen party, not a watch At party. Night, we soar just above thick, fluffy clouds. Several large beams of light shoot up from the ground, crisscrossing through the mist. Because this is completely it's audio framed, described and very professionally done. Um, if I wanted to, I could download this content to my Polaris and just have it. So if I have faves and I, and I um, really want to you know, listen to it offline, not necessarily be, you know, connected to the internet. And maybe I want to go sit in the yard on a summer's day with a little, you know, lemonade or some other beverage to be named. Um, I could do that. And, or I can bring it to a, a friend's house and connect it to their smart TV and watch it with them. So that is what I've got to say about Disney. Plus, you got anything to add, Miss Jenny? That. No, not really. Um, as I said, as we show a few of these media streaming apps, a lot of what you're going to use and the concepts are the same. You know, again, you're able to use first letter nav. Um, and I think it just points out how accessible these things are, what content is available, and how the interface on Polaris lends itself to, to search and playback, etc. So yeah, I think you're good. Here. I mean, Netflix is something when I would... I'm on the road. I've been known to pull up a media, um, a movie on Netflix, and I don't think we're going to do that today because we've got so much stuff. Um, but what is striking between the Disney Plus app and, and granted, it's a lot of different content, um, and, and Netflix. Not that one is better than the other, but just different. Um, in from an accessibility perspective. Disney is slamming because they got the audio description going on on the Polaris. And if you listen, I don't know if this is like the same with Android phones or not, um, the, the audio description track is not carried or nor, I have not been able to help find a way within the Netflix app to, to make it happen. But I know it's turned on because I can go Netflix on my Apple TV and boom, there's audio description. I try to use it on the Polaris and it's, it's not there, but it is here with Disney Plus. Earl, really quickly, while you're talking about audio description, am I correct that in the Disney Plus app, turn that on, you just go into settings and there's a setting, there's settings to turn on your audio description? Yeah, yeah usually you, you, have to, you turn it on once for one movie. It's actually... Right. A, uh, some, a dialogue that shows up within 
um, when you go to play the movie, um, there's a, a place you can go and specify the language. English is one, usually the default, uh, or English with description is what I changed okay. it to. Now that's my default. Um, and of course there's the options for closed caption and things like that, which is interesting because the Polaris will actually read the captioning um, and, and, and repeat what the actor is saying. <laughs> this is really an interesting experience. Very good, thank you, Earl. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is one thing to point out. I'm glad you mentioned that, that you can actually um, see the captions on the Braille display if you turn the voice off or uh, you can hear them. It's almost too much for the Polaris to handle and it's too much for most people, you know, as far as their sensory input. They're not going to want all of that, but it is possible. So um, if you did want to actually read what was going on or hear the captions for some reason or subtitles, um, it's somewhat doable if you, if you you know, decide to try that. At least we've seen it on Netflix work. And as I said, it's a, it's a little bit taxing on the Polaris. It's trying to do a lot. And even with what you're hearing, um, it's almost too much, but it is, it will work if you That's try it. Point. I mean, here we are uh, with a, pol a Polaris sharing, um, running the Zoom meeting, sharing my screen and running Disney Plus. Of course, you can't see the movie, but it's still um, a pretty impressive a am amount of, of a load to put on a processor a like what we've got in the Polaris. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my sh my sharing. I'm, I'm on a stop share button I see in Braille, and I'm just going to press the routing button above that. And I should uh, turn it back over to you, Jenny. Okay. I will share my screen. Current view is share. Double tap. Current view is share. Okay, and I can hear from Earl's computer that I it, it worked. So thank you for that, Earl. Okay, I'm gonna try to switch audio sources, so I may go away for a minute. Just a moment. Voice on. Hmm. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you, and we we also hear the the um, the, the hum of the speaker that you plug in in there too. A little bit. right, that I was trying to connect that didn't work. Okay, uh, we're going to do this a different way. I've used this setup many times, and I cannot explain why today is different. Um, so, file manager F. Are you able to hear the Polaris? Word processor, W. Sounds good. Okay, we're gonna go with that. Voice rate seven. Voice rate six. Okay. <clears throat> I want to show Ciro um, by Sarah Tech, and this is actually a blindness-related application. This service has been available for years on iOS, on Android, on uh, it's also available on Amazon Echo. Um, of course, on the PC. It's been around for a while, but I don't hear as much about it lately as I used to. And I actually think that's um, unfortunate because recently, as I said, they have really done a lot to step up content and we've shown videos and music and various things. What's really amazing about Ciro Tech is, and the Ciro app is that it combines so much stuff. So let's actually just jump in. 11,000 right quotes, saying status. I just opened my uh, all apps list. I'm going to press Ciro, uh, S a couple times for Ciro. Seeing assist, Ciro. And press enter. Ciro, Ciro, Ciro. List read the latest on the coronavirus, COVID-19. Enter key to select. So it is really interesting. They, they do have a news, um, part of their, their application, so you can read that. And if I tab here. List Iowa coronavirus, COVID-19, news center key to select. It actually says Iowa, which is where I'm from and where I would have registered for this application years and years ago. So it actually gives me relevant content immediately on the coronavirus, which is, is extremely useful. Um, what I actually want, since we're focusing on streaming media, I want entertainment, so I'm gonna press E. List email enter key to select. List entertainment enter key to select. And I'm going to press enter. List entertainment and entertainment. 
list accessible games enter key to select. So we have all kinds of things, some of which will work well in Polaris and some of which won't. There's accessible games. List audiobook links, concerts, speeches and recordings enter key to select. Audiobook links. List audiobooks enter key to select. Audiobooks. List audio dramas enter key to select. List content of interest to the blind community, formerly available in AdLink Radio, enter key to select. List described video programming enter key to select. We have described video programming. List entertainment updates enter key to select. List history of rock and roll enter key to s- list mainstream podcasts enter key to select. List music sites enter key to select. So we have all of these options for streaming. Actually, I'm not even done. List podcasts enter key to select. Podcasts. List radio stations enter key to select. List reading services audio on demand enter key to select. So this is like uh, what we call Iris in, in Iowa, where they read newspapers, etc. on the special radios. You can actually get these online and they're available here. List sports enter key to select. List support Saradek, save money and get great service. List, list reading serve, list radio stations enter key to select. And I'm just going back and I'm going back to radio stations. And of course, again, I could use first letter nav, but I just wanted to show you what's all here. And you are able to stream all of this on Polaris. So I'm I'm going to press enter on radio stations first. List radio stations, radio, radio, list 128K music networks, enter key to select. And there are different categories here just to, for expediency. I'm going to press M to go for list music by genre, enter key to select. Cute music by genre, we'll press enter. List, mu- 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 list 60s and 70s, enter key to select. And the first thing I have is decades. List 80s, and list 90s, enter key to select. I'm going to go... List 80s, enter key to select. We'll go to 80s. I'm an 80s child, so I'm going to press enter. List 80, 80s. Button more options enter key. Edit box disabled. List 1. FM 80 0 enter key to list 181. FM. Awesome 80s enter key to select. List 181. FM. Light 80s enter key to select. So I have all of these um, these radio stations that they have 181 FM. I think they have sky.fm. They have all of these online radio stations. I'm just going to press enter here. I might get a commercial, so um, bear with that for a moment if it's. List 181. List 181. FM. Lighting. Ooh. All right, totally right up my alley. The eighties child footloose. Get you gotta love that. So um, I also just used first letter nav. You have to go to the now playing button, and then I went to um, pause to to uh, get out of this. But again, uh, easy to do with first letter nav if you know where you're going. So you can actually stream a bunch of music online through the Serotech app. Eight, edit box disabled music radio. List 60s and 70s enter, list music, list 128K music, list, list accessible games enter key to select. Okay, so now I just pressed F4 to go back and back and back a few levels. What I want to do is go to descriptive video, so I'm gonna press D. List describe video programming enter key to select. And I'm gonna press enter here. List movies, enter key to select. So I have two options here. I have movies. List television programs and documentaries, enter key to select. And I have television programs and documentaries. So they do have a load of TV content as well as the latest movies. <coughs> Excuse me. They have so many categories. Again, I could go through them all, but it's, it's just amazing the number of movies that they have. Um, I'm going to press enter on television programs and documentaries. List television programs and documentaries, enter key to select television programs and documentaries. Okay, so list new editions in the past 30 days enter key to select. The first thing that you have is new editions in the past 30 days, and this is usually what I like to look at. I'm going to press enter here just to sort of give you an idea of what kind of content they're adding. List new edition, list the X-Files, season 10, US, 2016, enter key to select. List the X-Files, list the X-Files, season 11, UK. List the trouble with Maggie Cole, season one. List the split, season two. Two thousand. List Jim, season one. Arabic descript. List Nuts crosses, season one. Two thousand twenty. Enter key to select. List my left nut, season one. Two thousand. List flesh and blood, season one. Two thousand twenty. Enter. Key. List five bedrooms, season one. Two thousand nineteen. Enter key to select. I've got to be honest. I haven't heard of most of this. I'm assuming that maybe some of you guys have because they're all new shows in America, and me being over here, I don't necessarily know. Um. They, all of this is from 2019, 2020, but they have, as you can see, they're also adding old uh, seasons of the X-Files. Um, they have, you know, everything like Frasier. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. They have um, 
like I said, stuff from Netflix. They have the morning show from Apple. They have the Mandalorian. They have the man in the high castle from Amazon prime video. So they really take a lot of popular content from a bunch of different sources. I'm actually going to go back one level television programs and documentaries. And I want to search List television programs and documentaries edit box disabled search search press center to enter or edit text and I have a search edit box here and one of my favorite shows is Grace and Frankie from Netflix so I'm gonna press enter. list new, list new editions in the past oh. 30 days enter key to select it did not enable the edit box edit box disabled search search okay. press center to enter or edit list List new oh. editions in the past 30 okay. days. Enter key to select. Edit box disabled search. Oh, so list new editions in the past 30. Edit box disabled search. Search press enter to list, list new editions in the past. Okay, seriously, I just demoed this. <laughs> and I know Stuart Lawler is here and he can attest to this. I actually demoed it and searched for Breaking Bad for him and it works. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, I. It is very interesting, and Earl pointed this out. When you share a screen with Zoom, um, it sometimes has very weird effects that we cannot explain and are not necessarily consistent. Um, but you can, and I know they, like I said, they do have it. Um, list three, list the 7.39 enter key to select. I'm going to just actually choose a show and um, play this really fast, just so you can see that, but you are able to search for it. And normally that is um, a function that works rather well. Um, and it'll, you know, bring up the search results, which is again, you know, quite a bit easier when you're able to type. Um, I'm going to list, list, list 13 reasons why enter list, list 24 season one, not described, enter key to select. So it does let you know that some of these things aren't described for 24. I'm just looking for something to list 32 Brinkburn street, enter key to select. Okay. I have no idea what this is, but we're going to press enter here. List 32, Brinkburn, list season one, enter key to select. And then we have a list of seasons. So I, again, I can tab. Button now playing, press the edit, stop share, button and button more options and edit box to say list season one, enter key to, button now playing, press oh. the enter key to run, list season one, enter key to select. So it turns out they only have season one of this. If I ha if they had more seasons, I would see them here in this list. I'll press enter. List, list 0132, Brinkburn Street, enter key to select. List 0232, Brinkburn Street, enter key to select. And again, I'm just pressing tab and shift tab to move through the, the options here. This is the list of episodes. I'll go back to season. Or, list 0132 Brinkburn Street, enter key to select. Episode 1, and I'll press enter. 32 Brinkburn Street, 0132 Brinkburn Street. And button play, press the enter key to run. Press first letter nav for play. Zero. <laughs> A montage sequence interweaves the past and present with a 1930s street, its inhabitants and their belongings melding with their contemporary counterparts. And I just pressed enter on pause. What I love about apps like this, and specifically this one, it is meant for blind people. And so they really, really work to make it accessible. So when you press enter on the play key, in a lot of applications, you don't know where you're gonna land. Um, they, as, as they sort of demonstrated before, you end up having to move around or use first letter nav to find it again. The lovely thing about Ciro is that when you press play, you're automatically placed on the pause button. So again, I can just press enter. And press enter again. So it's just playing and pausing with me pressing enter. And of course, there is also a next button. Button next track, press the enter key to run. And again, I just got there by pressing N, and I could just press enter to move to the next episode. So again, this is very accessible, very easily used with first letter nav. Um, you can continue playing and you know go back and search for other things. So again, um, I'm not exactly <laughs> entirely sure why the search um, did not work, but it generally does. 32 Brinkburn Street. Uh, and it just refreshed my screen and read that. So again, this is something that I guess, you know, again, this is a monthly service, but they do, they have radio stations, they have news, you do get access to email, um, they have some chat functions, they have um, TV, they have movies, they have, and again, they, they grab from so many different sources. I actually prefer this not just because it's a descriptive video um, situation. I like it because, again, it, it was made for blind people, so it's certain to be accessible. It, again, crosses many devices. You are able to download content and listen to it offline. Um, 
if you're binge watching, it automatically changes to the next episode. It synchronizes your playback position across devices, which I think most of these things do. But I, the real reason that I love this right now is that there are so many streaming services that it's really, really hard to know which one to choose. And right now, I really love Ciro because it combines so much and really pretty much gets me the best of all worlds. The other thing is there are things like Disney Plus that actually are not available in Korea. Not that that's going to matter to most of you, but if, for those of you who are international, um, you are able to access some of that content that is currently only available in America, and you are able to access that through Ciro and as well as getting descriptive versions of that. So that is mainly what I wanted to show with that. I think, unless Mike or Earl has anything to add, I think we're ready to open it up to questions if you guys have. Um, of course, there are other streaming services that we did not show, like Netflix, Audible, Spotify, and generally these all do work well on Polaris. So um, whatever you might be looking for, if you need some assistance about how to get things running, or um, if you have questions about how to navigate certain applications in the most effective way, we can probably help you out with that. So feel free to ask, especially, you know, given the, these times, we know that you need to keep your brain stimulated and, and be entertained. So again, if you have any questions or are having problems with apps or want us to test something, please, you know, feel free to let us know. Can I, I ask the first question? Yeah. How much does Sarah cost? I knew somebody was going to ask me that. I think it is. Um, it's, it's a monthly subscription. I, I know there used to be a yearly subscription, and I think there also is a monthly subscription. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I want to think I do the yearly subscription, and I, oh, it's pretty reasonable if you do that. Um, otherwise, I think it's like sixteen ninety five a month. But again, given everything that you get with it, that's well worth it, and it's not. I don't know that I think most of the services are at least like 10 or $11 a month. And like I said, this gets you a little bit more. So I, I do oh, find really it worth cool. it. Yeah. Is it is, there is a free Sarah, isn't it? I mean, you, you do have access for free to some content, don't you? Uh, sorry about that. Say that again. There, it, now, Sarah, I've, I've, Sarah I've, I've got it on my phone and I can actually access, I don't pay for a monthly subscription. Of, I can actually ask access things like the Blind Bargains podcast and some of the other podcasts out there. Um, yeah, the software as a service or the, the, su the subscription mainly, I think, applies for the, the streaming media content, the mainstream content. Um, so that would be some of the radio stations and the movies and TVs, I think. Yeah. My goodness, it is 6 a.m. I really can't speak at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's after 7 now. Oh, oh, is that supposed to make all the difference? <laughs> I think, I think one, one thing, Ginny, that I would add, and, and we've all kind of said it, but not to like overly say it, but I will just say one more time. When you get apps, do not be afraid to just explore the app. You know, you're not going to break it. Go into settings, look around, see what you see. You know, when something's playing, tab through. Tab and back tab is going to really be your best friend. And then you need to press enter on edit boxes to begin a search. And sometimes if you press enter, you do not always get feedback with speech. So make sure that you, you can see it on the Braille display. display and that, yeah. see, yes, make sure that you look at your Braille display and make sure that you see a cursor because that will tell you when you're able to type. Anytime that you see dot seven and eight together at the bottom, that is your cursor. And that means, oh, this field is active and I can now type in it. Yes, that's a very good point. And I think the thing that I would say to that, and one reason that I, I also talked about floundering and tabbing around is that you do at first, and I don't want you to get discouraged and think this is the way that you use the app because it's not the way that you're gonna use the app every day. Once you know where you're going, you're gonna use first letter nav. You're gonna use the keyboard equivalents. And that's what makes this efficient, is being able to, to do that, to know what you're looking for and just access it immediately. And that's where it's different than a touch screen. It's different even sometimes than a PC. Um, it's because there are some instances where you have first letter nav in braille that you may not always have on a computer. Um, 
you know, it's, it's just, to me, this is being able to type in Braille, being able to see what you're doing. You can also turn your speech off, especially um, if you're sharing, as Earl was saying, if you're sharing with visual people and you're, you know, showing things through HDMI, you don't necessarily want your speech on, but you can deal with it in Braille and navigate without that disruption. So it really is just a very, very flexible solution in terms of streaming media. And as I said, when you know where you're going, it's very efficient. Yeah. And, and as you, more you use some of these apps, the smarter it becomes, it starts, right. to, starts to know you and yep. it becomes easier. Prime example, I'll just say earlier, you guys heard during my demo, um, I sometimes things just do not work in demos and we don't know why, but what I did earlier today was I went to the search by pressing S and I pressed enter and I typed O. O red, which is O L apostrophe red by Blake Shelton. And I typed T for top entry. And then I went down arrowed one time or I hit tab rather one time. And there was uh, the, the search O red that I was looking for. That's why during my Apple demo, you heard it talk about O red because before we did this demo today, that was a thing I searched for and I immediately, you know, was just able to jump right to it. So, that sort of navigation is amazing. It's interesting yep. because I would have never thought of um, any day now by Ronnie Millsap as being illicit. You know what? I found that that everything, all of my playlists say explicit, basically. And I, yeah, I was wondering the same thing. I have no idea why, but everything is automatically labeled that way. Mm -hmm. It's weird. So it's not at all. <laughs> it's, of course, it's not at all explicit, but everything, even my... I, I don't it's a coffee house um playlist that i have that's and it's totally there's nothing explicit about it but for some reason right. everything's labeled that way right. so yeah don't don't get put off by that it's really not <laughs> i didn't think about it, but it did the same thing on my pixel phone so so yeah it's not it's not a polaris thing it did the same thing on my pixel phone so <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> not really sure why apple music does that on android but there you go all right Thank thomas you, do we have any thomas? Yeah, we've or got. Do we have any questions? Uh, yep, we've got a number of them. Um, all right. All right. So, um, typically, just for those of you that are following along and have joined us before, uh, we try to keep a little bit on focus here uh, with the questions in terms of uh, the content, right? So we try to match questions with regards to uh, what we talked about. Um, so somebody wrote. Uh, they have a few questions about the Polaris. Uh, what Thomas, is it, what one is second it? there before before you start questions today. Yeah. In the last webinar, we did have a gentleman who had called in on his phone. So let me just quickly say that if you, uh, when Thomas unmutes you, allows you to speak, um, you can you can mute or unmute your audio on a computer by doing alt a that's your command to mute or unmute if you want to raise your hand the command is alt y that will raise and lower your hand and star six if you are on a telephone line will unmute your speech so i just wanted to bring that up because last time somebody had a question they were on their phone they were muted and they could not ask it so those are the ways that you mute and unmute how do you raise your hand on the phone how, how would go for it thomas <laughs> you know to, to be unmuted see that's the thing. yeah all right so um somebody's asking what is the player so features does it have and can you use it with an ipad or an iphone um so i think the best answer to this if you have questions in general about the players you know reach out to us after this uh, webinar um you know you can always reach us by email at sales at hymns inc.com or you could call us at 512-837-2000. Um, we could talk with you a little bit more in depth about the players. That's a little bit longer of a conversation uh, about what the players is. And than by what the way, yeah, there, in, there, there are, there's just a whole repository, ever growing um, resource of, of <clears throat> videos out there. Um, even on the webinar, if you go to hymns inccom slash webinars, you'll see all the webinars that we've done to date and some of the upcoming ones and things. And, and some of those might uh, um, answer your question as well. Yep. Or you can go to our YouTube channel at hymns-inc.com 
And right there on the page, if you bring up your list of links, if you're using the screen reader, you can press Y for YouTube, go there. And oh my gosh, there's things dating back since uh, the Polaris hit the market that still apply. Um, and the, can you use it with an iPad or iPhone? The answer is definitely yes. Um, uh, the next one, um, so can you share the screen of the players with Zoom? The answer is yes. Uh, We've yeah. been doing just that. That's All exactly of what. Um, and then yep. somebody was asking, how are you raising your volume? Um, so there's a couple different ways to raise volume. Uh, you could raise the, the master volume. There's uh, two physical keys on the left panel, uh, or you can press backspace, space, and F1 or F4, respectively, to decrease or increase, uh, or backspace and F1 and F4 for voice volume. Um, can you do podcasting with the Polaris? Who wants to take this one? Well, um, so yes, you can. Um, it's going to depend on what you're looking to do, what you're going to use to do that. Um, you can easily record. Um, right now I am using a Blue Yeti and I run the line in of that to my uh, line in source for uh, my Polaris and it actually makes a beautiful recording. It's it's a nice, beautiful stereo recording. What's great, if you want to do something live where you don't want to actually do a direct mix of some kind of audio, it's going to pick it up very nicely. Um, that's, so it's, it's going to depend on what you want to do. So you, of course, you can record in our media player and you can do a stereo recording from a line in source, from a direct mic source. There are internal stereo mics. Then, of course, you've got your publishing platforms. And, you know, again, that's going to depend on whether you want to use a PC. I don't know if all those, some of them are probably accessible on a Polaris. Um, again, you know, with audio editing, we are experimenting with some audio editing tools. And we have found a couple that, that work. Um, nothing, you know, to me, audio editing is one of those things that usually is better performed on a PC. Um, but if you really want to try and do everything on Polaris, there probably are ways to pull that off. It's just a matter of sort of figuring out what it is that you're looking to do. So it's hard to answer that question entirely because it depends on, do you want to do an audio podcast? Do you want to do a video podcast? We have found an accessible screen recorder. Um, we're also working on some, some um, features internally for that as well. So it's again it's such a hard question to answer because it really depends on what kind of podcast you want to do where you want to publish it so the how is going to be the question that's that's going to differ depending on how you're going to want to do that are there tools to make that happen yes um is it always the most efficient way that depends sometimes yes sometimes probably not but that's the case with anything sometimes it's more efficient to do something on your phone sometimes it's more efficient to do something on your computer so um i guess the short answer is yes it's possible the longer answer is um, whether it's the best method is probably going to be dependent and what tools on the Polaris you will use will be dependent on what exactly you're trying to do. Certainly the, the creation of a, a basic audio file with, with you know, MP3 format, um, you know, it's, it's very easy to do on the Polaris. And because and you, do have the, you do have the, the, um, the microphone in, there's a jack. There's actually, it's on the Polaris, the regular 32 cell Polaris. There are stereo microphones that are very sensitive. Um, and I think that's what you're using, right, Mike? You're just using it is. Polaris. And um, so they're very sensitive. And if you, you want to do a re real quality recording, there is a, um, a microphone in a jack, a three and a, uh, what's it, a 3.5 millimeter jack, standard headphone jack on the side of the device and just right next to the headphone jack. So um, it is a tool that you can use to record a podcast, whether it's the tool you want to use to, to uh, upload it. Um, yeah, that's, it, it's that, that's kind of um, under exploration right now, I think. All right. Uh, so next up, uh, somebody was asking, "What is the uh, what key is tab?" Um, so that would be uh, F three and why space with F three as the next one. Shift tab. 
It's yep. just like shift tab. Absolutely. You can uh, also use space for those of you who are used to standard navigation in Braille, you can also use space four, five and space one, two. So those do also work. Some of you, that's more traditional and some people do prefer that and use that actually both, both uh, methods work. Yeah. While we're on that subject, you know, Jenny was using a four, you know, the far right little flat button to, to go up one level at a time and me being an old legacy Braille guy, uh, I was using space E, uh, chord E to do the same thing. Yep. And I had, I had mentioned that, you know, you would think that the command might be shift and tab or dot seven tab to go back. And that is not, that's kind of why I raised that specifically when I was doing the Apple music demo, it's space with tab to go back. Mm -hmm. But as Jenny said, you know, oftentimes we all do four or five chord for tab and B chord for shift tab, which is the old legacy way of doing it. All right. Uh, can you use SoundCloud with the Polaris? I tried that. Um, I did not love the interface on it. Got, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, it's probably doable, but I didn't have enough patience to, to go through it. And that's the that's case true. with some some Android apps, and that doesn't necessarily, again, mean that it's a Polaris thing. It could, it can just be an accessibility thing. I did not try it on my phone as well, but my guess is I would have had a difficult time there too. So the app is downloadable, yes. You can install it, you can try it, um, it generally works. But as I said, I, I didn't really have enough patience to play with it. I wasn't that interested in SoundCloud, but yeah, the app is installable and usable. Right. Um, is the Polaris compatible with all Android apps? It is compatible with Android apps that are accessible to um, a screen reader, to TalkBack. We use the, the basic accessibility platforms. Um, so it's going to compatible, no device, no Android device is compatible with all Android apps. And in fact, I think probably the majority of apps, if you actually really look at it, are not compatible. And the reason I say that is because there are a lot of games and stuff that we don't even try. Um, you know, there are accessible games out there, but there are a lot of things that are really made for specifically for visual and imagery and things that are, you know, video editing apps are probably not as a rule going to be very accessible. So the apps that are out there, um, it is, it is um, not always true. The thing that you have to remember about this, so one really great example that I have and I bring up all the time is um, I found this really great screen recording app which turned out to be just fabulous for recording demos and tutorials. I had to try, I believe it was the ninth or tenth app that I tried to find that because most screen recorders are, they're all icons, they're all um, a, a lot of times they're not, they don't show up on the main screen. They're in like the notification area. Um, and I could not, I tried and tried and tried because I was determined that I was going to do this by myself. Um, and, but when I did find it, I was so excited because I did find one that was entirely accessible. The fact that I could actually make a video file directly from my note taker by myself, I was just like, woohoo. So it was worth it to go through that, that trouble. We do have an accessible apps list that we can share with you that will help you get started because it is sometimes discouraging when you're going and you're looking for applications. Um, and you try several and you go, ah, I can't use this or, or this is really difficult. We've actually got a list of about 400 that'll get you started that'll work. And the thing that that does is once you see apps work, you know that if you will stick with it and, and you know, try a few, you will find one that does. So you're not as discouraged. You understand that that is possible. So the answer is no, not all apps are um, compatible with Polaris. Most main services, you know, when you look at something like Spotify, Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, they're going to be. Um, most of them do, for the most part, fit accessibility requirements. There are plenty of things that are, and they're often when you're looking for utilities, if you just try a few, you'll get there. But patience definitely is the key, but the reward is absolutely worth it. And the fact that being able to use Android gives us so much more accessibility than we had before. And I think that's the thing to remember, that note taker technology 
used to, I'm rambling, I'm so sorry, but I've got, I do want to make this point. No take your technology used to be limited to what we could specifically develop for those devices when we were using Windows CE and older operating systems. Now with Android, we do have access to so much that's mainstream. We don't have to do everything ourselves, but by design actually, um, not necessarily intentional design, but by design, there are many, many apps that are not compatible or accessible. And that's going to be the case for even your Android phone or tablet. So it's, it's not a Polaris thing. It's just a matter of accessibility. And again, I'm sorry for that very long explanation. Good job, Jenny. We learn so much when you ramble. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <clears throat> All right. So uh, somebody wrote, just tried Backspace uh, Space Enter Command for the first time on Apple Music Track. Very cool. Thank you very much for that comment. We like to hear it when things are going well and you uh, are happy with the information you get, you're getting. We all learn from each other. I mean, I, I remember, you know, when Jenny mentioned space in our backspace, I remember seeing that in some release notes a while back <clears throat> on software release, but, you know, uh, things that we sometimes forget. So it's good to have mm -hmm. all of us work together as a team here. It's good. So here's a question, uh, one I've never even considered before. Um, is there a way with the Polaris to see how much time you spend on your device? <laughs> oh, you're talking about like digital well-being. Oh. Yeah, that's an interesting concept, right? Um, yeah, well, it's everywhere on mainstream devices, I understand. <clears throat> Why, hang on, I'm just actually, to be honest, I'm going to check <laughs> while we're talking about it. I think that came in a later version of Android. I'm not totally sure. Um, I'm just looking really fast. Do we have another question while I'm checking it? Sure. Um, can, so this is coming from uh, Leo. Uh, can you spell the app name, please? Uh, I don't Which know. app? A screen sharing app, I'll bet. Yeah, well, Leo, uh, go ahead and raise your hand here. Um, if you're here, yep, you're here. Leo, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, ask away. Hi. Can hey, Leo. Me? Yep, we can hear you. Good to have you back. Yeah. Uh, Still up? Which app? The Ciro app. The Ciro. Oh, Ciro. Oh, yeah. It's just S E R O. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And uh, uh, one question. I I experiment with uh, Polaris the last week because I decided to buy it. Yeah. yeah. Woohoo! And uh, I would like to ask a question about the the media buttons. On the Apple Music or on, on the Netflix app, can Oh, can you thank you for asking oh. that. Thank you for asking that. That is something I forgot to mention, and it's something we added in the, the most recent release. Um, yeah. Yes, you can. So yeah, the, way, <laughs> the way that that works, it's a little bit different. So um, in Android media <laughs> apps, if you put... So there's a switch on the front that switches yeah. between media mode, daisy mode, and app mode. So you want to put it in app mode. And then instead of just pressing like the play pause and the next button, and the re you want to press and hold them for about a second. So you it press and hold on, them. Uh, on, on, uh, on this app it, or not? It, yes, yes. It should, any app that uses standard Android media controls that will work. So Amazon Music, Audible, um, it should work for Netflix, Zero, all of those. Oh, Even um, voice, there's uh, something called Voice Stream Reader that's actually a, uh, well, it'll read Bookshare and, and other types of content. And because yes, it actually uses standard media controls, even with speech, you can use it with that too. So yes, mm -hmm. yes, you can. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Leo. Uh, all right. So... Uh, Jenny, did you want to get back to the, oh, uh, yeah, the um, digital well-being? Yeah. I'm not seeing it, and I want to think that that is something that was added in a later version of Android. That's why we don't have it. I was just looking through our Android system mm -hmm. settings. If it is, it's not immediately visible to me. 
Um, so I don't think you can, but I don't think that's about Polaris. I think it's about the version of Android we're using. Okay. Um, ooh, we have a very special caller, uh, Kelly Harrison. Ooh. Get your hand up. Kelly, go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, ask away. I don't know how that happened. I don't have my hand up. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> oh, no. Aww. Well, Kelly, we're glad to hear from you anyway. <laughs> Kelly is the wife of Earl Harrison. And she's like the, the, uh, the, the, the media queen. She knows all about this stuff. Are you, <laughs> got anything to add? Are you gone already? Yeah, she, she muted herself. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm going to lower her hand here. And uh, all right. All right, uh, my only Android app product option is the Polaris. What is the best way to know which apps may be available? Available or accessible? The mm. question um, says available. Of course you can search the Google Play Store for anything that you're looking for. Um, like I said, accessibility is something we already sort of discussed and, and um, you might have to try a couple depending on, on what it is. But as far as what you can download, of course, just search the Play Store and see what comes up. Okay, great. Um, next up, uh, for those of us who have been a bit timid about playing in the Android world, do you have any manual or tutorial helping those of us who came from the U2 to get started looking for apps, et cetera? Um, I would say the best place to start is section, no, I don't know, is it 12 or 13 of the manual that's on the mobile screen reader. That's going to give you all of the, the explanation of how this works. And of course, the command, the very last section of the command summary is a list of keystrokes too. Um, but it's, that's basically all you need. It's not a very long chapter, but it does explain how it's different from operating in the Polaris applications and what keystrokes you need to use to navigate. Yeah, and the whole key is really just don't be afraid. I mean, you're not going to break anything. Just go explore. All right. Uh, somebody asked how long the session is scheduled for. We're going <laughs> to dismiss it. <laughs> Um, you can leave any time, or, yeah. or rather, according to Hotel California that he played earlier, you can check out any time, but you can never right. leave. You just can never leave, that's right. <laughs> but no, you're free to exit any time, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> we, we won't be offended. Um, do, you know any, uh, do you know of any limitations with the Mini when playing some content that it won't play unless you're using external speakers? No. No, I mean, when you're using the mini, you know, you, you have a, you have one speaker versus two speakers on the big Polaris, and you're going to get stereo when you use it, the big Polaris. But as far as there's no difference at all in the content or, you know. so There's no limitation, but the question makes me wonder if that person has found one. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, maybe, I mean, you can, you can actually Bluetooth to a, a nice speaker and get that nice stereo imaging, or you mm -hmm. can sure. plug it, you just basically yeah. plug in a you know, hardwire a cable into it. Like um, right now, I have my uh, Bose Revolve speaker is plugged into my Polaris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Um, next question, will we be able to provide a certificate for professional development? Uh, the answer is yes, but it's probably not worth much of anything. Um, I could do Photoshop, uh, but yeah, we're not, uh, this particular session is not, pre um, registered for ACR VEP or whatever it is. Um, yeah, we don't have any certificates for professional development for this particular webinar, uh, but we are Sorry, considering. I didn't quite catch that. Could you please repeat it? Siri, <laughs> be quiet. Um, <laughs> we have looked into it. We have looked into it. And so those may be available in the, in the near future. Um, so the next question, uh, it appears the Android version of Bard does not allow Braille books. Is this true or am I missing something? I believe that is true, but again, that's not going to be a Polaris problem. That's going to be a Bard issue. You could discuss that with them. However, the advantage of having a Polaris as opposed to an Android phone is that you can use the Bard website and you'll be able to read those BRFs in our notepad with no problem. 
Yeah, and I've confirmed this before. Yeah, uh, they allow for so many more downloads through a web browser than through their Android their app, app. And I have no yeah. idea why. Yeah, I also will say that with the iPhone app, the iPhone does allow you to get BRF books from Bard. And if you do it with an iPhone, uh, you but can... then you have to connect to Braille display. That's the yes. Thing. Yes, I was going to. That's where so, I was going to go. Is that you have to connect it to a Braille display, such as the Cube Braille or the Polaris, and then you can read your book. Okay. But if you do have the Polaris, you can do it internally. That's that's the nice thing. So, um, with an Android phone, again, you can't. So. Right. All right. Uh, up next, uh, I've never had much. I've never had much using my Polaris with Bluetooth speakers. Audio is always choppy. Mm. If you have an older speaker, that's true. I have found that. Um, and I, I don't know what that's about, if it's a different protocol or something, but I have found most current speakers do really work well. Um, Mike is using a Bose. I love Bose. It's my go-to. Um, I have several and they work really well. Um, I have a, I do have a Jambox Mini, which is not new, and that works pretty well also. So I it seems to depend Jambox on the speaker. Mini. I know, it's so cute. Yes. All right. Up next, does Polaris have Microsoft Office? Uh, no. But. You, oh, go, go ahead. It is cross-compatible in a lot of ways. Go ahead, Jenny. Sounded like I you was wanted to. Say, well, no, I was going to say you can download it, of course. Um, you can use it on the Android side. I don't prefer that over the word processor. I would prefer our own word processor and notepad. Of course, we can save in DOCX, and you could, so you can read and, and write, and it is, as he was explaining, cross-compatible. But if you really need to use Office, um, it is, and it's not too bad. I believe the newest versions of Microsoft are not compatible with our version, but you can go to apkpure.com and get uh, versions that you can use. And I do remember trying it, and I, to be honest, I found it easier to use than Google Docs, um, which we, we can, of course, also use. So um, it's possible to use it, but it's not. We, we base our word processor on Polaris Office, but we do actually save in uh, DOCX by default, so it's, it is uh, exportable and compatible. And getting back to the cross compatibility, you know, the the uh, default uh, file format for the word processor is DOCX. So if you're looking at, you know, ty you can type in contracted Braille, save the document, and then bump it over to a Google Drive, share that with somebody else with the knowledge that it's just going to come up in regular text in their, their Microsoft Word, um, you know, word processor. And also, with the Excel viewer and the um, uh, PowerPoint viewer, you know, you just browse to the, uh, the file. You can't edit them, but you can certainly view Excel files and PowerPoint presentations and things like that. So in that respect, it's very compatible without having to actually use the Microsoft product. Our note taker is actually the only one that you can open um, using note taker native apps you can open excel files uh pdf powerpoint and powerpoint is i've never actually experienced an, an interface that is as nice with powerpoint in that um you are able to read and as you you end a slide it automatically switches to the next one it's perfectly synchronized both in braille and visually um, and so, of course, you can turn your voice off, and it's just, a, you can skip, of course, from slide to slide, but you, and you can read speaker notes. It's just, I've never actually experienced an interface that's that easy, um, that you can just so easily use only one device. You don't need a, a Braille display and a PC. You can do it all in <clears> one and show it visually and uh, also read in Braille. So that is one of the most impressive aspects of what we do. All right, up next, we've got a two for one. Uh, so one person wrote, how do I obtain the accessible apps list? And the next person wrote, since you answered my question about where to get apps, how can I access that list? It will get we'll email it to you. If you, if you send us an email, um, support should have the list. I'll make sure they have it. So if you just email support at hymns com, we'll be happy to send it to you. All right. Uh, next question, uh, what's the difference between Polaris and Polaris Mini Note Taker? 
Um, one is the Polaris and the other one is smaller. Um, I, I know I'm being a bit facetious here, but really, uh, for the most part, that's it. You're going 32 cells to 20 cells. The ports are a little bit different, so the mini uses USB-C. Um, the SD card slot is a little bit different as well, but other than that, for the most part, they are virtually the same. I don't know if anybody else wants to add to that, but form factor. Yeah, I'll say a couple yes, things. I mean, the, the size the, weight. I'll say a couple things there. If if, if you know, you kind of want to think about really what you're going to be using the device for. Um, you know, give us a call. We can certainly talk to you more about it. Um, Jenny is a person who loves her Polaris Mini. I am a person, I love my Polaris. Um, you know, as, as we've mentioned, the speakers are different. The microphones are different. The, the Polaris Mini uses a micro SD card compared to a full SD card. The Polaris Mini uses a USB-C port compared to a traditional, what we call Bluetooth A port. So those are things that you want to think about when you're making a purchase. Now, one thing I will say, and we're not going to go on here forever, but one thing I will say is that they do make a thumb drive that has both a USB-C and a USB-A connection. So if you they make a lot of them now. Yep. It's not a thumb drive. It's a well, really common thing these days. Mini thumb drive. <laughs> Um, and so you're able to, um, you know, easily transfer files from one device to another. So don't let that USB-C port stop you. Um, but those are some differences. All right. Uh, coming up next, uh, since Apple Music files are different than MP3 files, can they still be played on the Polaris alone or be downloaded into the Polaris? What audio file extensions can be used in the Polaris? That's a really good question. So Apple Music um, in general cannot be played from the Polaris Media Player nor any Android Media Player. It can only be played from its own application. But again, that's not a Polaris thing. That's an Apple Music thing. You can download so that you are able to do it offline, but you will have to play them in Apple Music. And if you, if you uh, cancel your subscription, they will go away or they will, at least if they're there, they will no longer be playable. So um, that's about digital rights management, of course. Now, if you have locally, if you have purchased files, they actually are MP3 files. So they will be perfectly playable and local to you. And of course, if you have other local content that you've uploaded to the cloud, that's still going to be, you're going to be able to play that. Then anything that you've actually just, like your playlists, if it's something that you're just streaming or you've downloaded via Apple Music and you haven't purchased it, once you cancel your subscription, they're no longer playable. Um, you know, again, but that's about the app. Um, we play MP3, we play, of course, Wave, we play AAC, Flack, Og Vorbis, oh goodness, MP4, AVI. So we do play um, video formats in our, our media player. You'll just hear the audio, but you can, if you have, for some reason, have uh, ripped um, video files, you can actually play them in our media player. That's no problem. Um, wow, I can't even remember all the extensions we support, but probably basically anything that Android is going to support, we're going to be able to play. Awesome. Uh, okay, I don't know what that one's in reference to. Okay, uh, you guys are awesome, super helpful. Ginny, I swear, we're kindred spirits. Uh, not me, the person <laughs> who wrote this. Uh, or maybe we are. Who knows? I do have tons of tech. It's sort of an addiction. Actually, I can relate to that. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, what's the website you mentioned when talking about the older versions of Office? Oh, uh, APK Pure, I think it is, isn't it? Uh, APKPure.com, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Thomas? Yep, yep. And you can find a lot of stuff there. So if for some reason you can't find something in the Play Store or it says something like, this is not compatible with your device, this is actually, I, I'm glad you asked that because that reminds me of something we really should mention about accessible apps. There are apps like Amazon Kindle and actually Apple Music that think they need a screen. It's not even about OS. It's about it thinking that you need a screen. And as you just saw, 
um, Apple Music is perfectly accessible and compatible and there's no problem, but actually Google thinks it isn't because we are not identified as having a screen. So if you go to apkpure.com, you're gonna be able to find those. And if for some reason the Android version is, um, if the app is not compatible with our Android version, again, you can usually find archived versions that are on apkpure.com. So that's an extremely um, great resource and it's also generally a reputable resource. You do have to watch when you download APKs where they come from, but you can count on APK Pure to, um, to not uh, install things that you don't want installed on your device. Um, the other, what was, there's something else I was gonna mention. What would that be? Help me out guys. What am I forgetting? Do you want to mention quickly a little bit about how just two seconds about how to install an APK just in case someone wants to do it? Yep. So um, in the Android system settings under security, there's an option to allow apps from other sources or unknown sources, something like that. You want to make sure that's checked. It will give you an alert that says, are you sure you want to do this? Once you've done that, actually all you need to do is if it's anywhere in your file manager on a thumb drive, et cetera, just press enter on it and it, it will automatically launch the installer. So right. you do have to check that security setting, but once it's done, it's done forever. And you can just simply launch it from the file manager and it will install automatically and it will appear in your all apps list. And you can do a search with APK pure um, within that. That's an app in and of itself, right? They've got their own downloader. Do they? I actually haven't tried that. I've always just done it through Google. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing too. A lot of times if you just, for example, if you just type in Apple Music um, APK into Google, it'll pop right up. Um, mm -hmm. Amazon Kindle, you can get it directly from Amazon itself. So you know it's reputable from there too. So yeah, when, when, I, when I installed Apple Music, I did not even need the APK. I just Play Store and downloaded Apple Music. And oh, did it change? Uh, it didn't used to allow us to do that. Yeah, because I downloaded it about three or four weeks ago, just okay. from, just from the, the Play Store. Store. Oh, that's Store. great. Oh, yeah, it didn't actually used to be. You used to have to install the app. Downloaded games. it from the App Store and the Play Store, actually, in fairness, but yes. <laughs> okay, great. You guys, when, when you download an app, like I download Netflix and it just works on whatever yeah. um, device I'm using, you know, whatever Polaris, because does it remember the version that I downloaded? Because uh, yes, yeah, yeah it does. Um, in the Play Store, if you've downloaded something before, even, and that's, that's what's interesting too, because you can bring up your library and it will remember what you had, um, your Google account, it's stored in your Google account, what apps so you've folks, downloaded. Yeah, that, that explains why if you go to download something like Disney Plus and it doesn't work, you're probably going to have to get the older version of that um, via APK Pure or some other source. N Netflix actually has the older version on their site, don't they? So. They do. Yep. There's a little link on their website that says, if you have an older version, please download this instead. And it, it mm -hmm. takes you right to it. So. Other so, questions there, Thomas? Yep. Um, at one point in a previous webinar, it sounded like Jenny said there was a way to get Kindle books to Kindle books to work in the media player. Did I misunderstand this? Yes, it doesn't work in the media player. Audible books do. Um, well, no, sorry, they're not in the media player. Uh, you can use the media buttons to control them. But no, Kindle books, you, um, you actually do need to use the Kindle app. And as I explained, you want to turn pages using space three and space six, and you may have to refresh this, the screen with F3, but it does work in Braille. Continuous speech doesn't um, work right now. It Interestingly though, it does not work on the BNT either. Even Amazon isn't sure why, and we're trying to figure that out. Um, you can read in Braille. I do actually find with Kindle, it's, and this is the other thing too. One of the things that I love about Polaris is that it augments other stuff I do. So for example, I might actually prefer to read with Kindle on my phone mm. because I can walk around with it, but I definitely prefer to search and download using the Polaris or search anyway and purchase using the Polaris. It's so much easier to do that. So that's the other thing to remember is that you can use the same app across devices and you may find that some parts of it are easier to do with the Polaris and some parts are easier to do with something else. And they will sync up. So in other words, if yes. Jenny downloads a book on her Polaris, she can go on her phone on her Kindle app and look under her library and there's her book. One other thing I want to say too, guys, just to kind of 
generalize for the most part. Think about the Polaris kind of in a way as you think about an iPhone, and that is, or any mobile tablet slash phone, and that is when you're using an app to do something, things generally stay within the app that you're using to do it in. One exception would be Go Read, where in there we download a book, and then because we can do it on the Polaris, we go into the um, into our book reader, and we 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 you know, we can read the book there, but you could also read it in Go Read. But for the most part, if you're looking, if you're listening to Apple Music, you're going to play your music there. You can't really take it to the, you know, media player of the Polaris because these are Android apps. And so they kind of want you using their app to do the things that you do in that app. Yes. Great. Uh, coming up next, uh, will the players directly download NLS books as the U2 will do? You have to use the BARD application, uh, the BARD mobile application, unless you're downloading Braille books from the browser. Um, but you're not going to play them in the Daisy Player the same way. And the, the reason for that, and again, this is the same on the competitor, um, because they have their own Android app, they, they ask you to use that to play those books. And again, once you learn the app, you're going to use first letter nav to do things like forward and play and stop and, and those things. All right. Uh, we got uh, two different people saying thank you very much. Um, is this going to be recorded posted on the YouTube channel? Yes, it is. Uh, we will put this uh, recording online um, once it gets rendered and ready to go. Uh, we've got uh, several people with their hands up here. Uh, Shireen, uh, you are, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Ask okay. Uh, so my question actually isn't about recording podcasts. It's about, this may have come up before in another, I apologize, but playing them. Is there a, is there a, like, is there an app or something on the Braille Sense Polaris that would allow me to, like, search the name of a podcast Mm -hmm. subscribe and then like refresh it every every week or every you know whatever and get the new content either downloaded to my Polaris or available somehow the easiest one I think um, I've actually tried several because you're not the first person to ask and I think the easiest one to use is Google casts that's the one I actually prefer but there okay. are other ones that work but I prefer Google casts I think Okay, I'll try it. Thanks. Okay. All right. And let's go ahead and move our hand. All right. Uh, phone number ending in 7768. You have your hand raised. Star six to unmute yourself. Yes. There you go. Yeah, you, you can't actually from the phone. He has to do it, which he did apparently. So thank Perfect. you. Um, once you guys mute us uh, from, you know, for calling in from the phone, you have to unmute us. But anyway, um, I wanted to know, somebody a long time ago put the uh, Cero app on my uh, A device, you know, the ones we usually don't like to, to mm -hmm. name, that Amazon thing. Yes, yes. Now, would that carry over, would, would that um, subscription carry over to the um, Polaris or what I have to sign up if for it again on there. And I, I guess the other part of that question is I have put apps on the Polaris, but I'm very interested in things like, you know, where he showed the Disney plus and that kind of stuff. I've never installed anything that I actually had to pay for on there. So I don't know if you guys can talk a little bit about, about that or, and maybe you can also say if, if the uh, Hulu app with description will work on there. So a couple of things. Um, if you, uh, when you think about installing apps, um, your Cero subscription, as long as you know your username and your password for Cero that you signed into with the A device, it should work on your Polaris. Um, and then 
when you, you know, you'll, you, you'll sign in with those same credentials. Um, an example of that would be Apple Music. So I, you know, when I download Apple Music on my Polaris, because it's something that I already pay for, I have a username and a password. So when I first download the app, it has me sign in. And oftentimes in the case of my Apple Music, it sent me a, it sent me a code and it's like, you know, this is, is this really you? If it is, put this number into your app and it allowed me to do that. So, you know, you kind of have to tab around again and find things, find your buttons and edit boxes, press enter to activate an edit box when you're typing in. And um, if you're downloading something from the Google Play Store that requires a purchase um, in your Google account, you can add a credit card there if you're buying an app that would need to be purchased. You guys want to add? Or a subscription. Like, you know, it's got to be worth it to you. So for, for us, you know, we love a lot of the Disney stuff. So, and, and there's it's so much beyond in the Disney Plus app. That's, I guess, where the Plus comes in. And that's what, 10 bucks a month or something? I don't know. It just, I just said, sure, fine, sign me up. And, and, um, and on one hand, on the other hand, you know, like I said earlier, I, I just had a, like abandoned my old Pandora app because I don't have access to the old email address anymore. So I started this new one and it gives you an option for a 30 day free trial. A lot of them do, because this is how they get you on the hook, right? 30 days. And hopefully you'll forget that, that, you know, in the terms of use, they told you that they're going to charge you nine ninety nine plus tax. Um, at the end of your free trial, and then the clock starts ticking month after month after month, you pay your subscription until you tell them to cancel it. So in my case, I'm so cheap. What I did is I, you so I 30 day subscription. Okay. Well, I set a reminder on my phone to say, um, let me know when 29 days, you know, remind me in 29 <laughs> days. So if I want to cancel it, I can. Yes. But, but the short, the short answer is that all these services are cross-platform and cross-device. You pay for them once so you can use them everywhere. Right. Okay, and I guess the other part of it that you didn't, nobody addressed is that um, you showed Disney, which I was, was really quite fascinated with, and I guess I can just download that app straight to the Polaris, but the other thing I wanted to know is the uh, Hulu now has a lot of shows with uh, description. Has anybody put that app on the Polaris yet? And does it work with description on there if you have? Oh, I'm sorry. I actually haven't tried that one. Yeah, I, I have not. Experience. With Hulu. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. You guys just um, are super for putting this on. And this is, I think, your first one like this that I've gotten to attend. I've listened to a couple of them, of the archives. But this is great. Well, thanks. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Early. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. All right. Uh, so up next, uh, we have, let's see, phone number ending in 7489. 7489? Hi, this is Sue Tillett, and thank you. This has really been very interesting. Um, I was wondering a, a couple things. Are any of the language studying uh, programs accessible like Oh. <laughs> um, I can actually answer that because I was trying to learn Korean um, and I tried several different ones. I, I got to tell you, not very much. And the reason that they're not, they're actually not very accessible online either. A lot of them are not. Um, and the reason is that they use all these things with like speech bubbles and all these weird little, um, and so they turn out not to be very great. Or I found um, a lot of them are actually more accessible on the iPhone. So I'll tell you what I what I managed to find for Korean. Um, and I think is what you kind of want to look for. I actually found a really great site. Um, and this is what you're going to have to, you'll probably have to do is look for individual sites for the languages that you're going to want to learn. But if you can find something that has a combination of accessible PDFs and um, audio 
files, like MP3 files. I did find that for Korean and that worked beautifully. Or either, even, again, videos. Um, and a lot of, the other thing that I found about a lot of the language learning sites is that they do actually have videos on YouTube that you can actually watch for free. But even if you need the course content, you can actually locate the videos on YouTube and those will play without any problem. So yeah, the, the actual language learning sites or the apps a lot of times are seriously not accessible and it's really, really annoying. And a lot of it is it's because of those little speech bubbles that you're, that they're, they're um, using. But there usually are other ways and other sources where you can actually download PDF lessons and audio lessons and that will work. Thank you. The best one I found um, is Mango. And although when they first introduced the word, I couldn't get the spelling until they put it into multiple choice. And then you could get the spelling. So I wrote down all the multiple choice words, even if I didn't know what it meant yet, and knowing that it would soon be identified. Um, oh, wow. So that was a way around it. But um, does Apple Music have free music too, or do you have to pay for any Apple Music that you get? With Apple Music, they do usually give you a 30-day trial of Apple Music, and there are some phone plans. Um, I know that with Verizon, there are some phone plans that give you access as part of your phone plan to Apple Music and Disney+. Plus. Um, okay, I have one other little quick question. My brother is willing to share uh, his Netflix with me and his Amazon Prime to put my device on um is that will that work the answer is yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i shared my netflix account with my sister and i was here in korea and she's in the u.s so you both as long as you both just sign into the account netflix is really cool too because it allows you to define um netflix actually expects you to share like with your family so um it actually allows you to define who's watching and gives you um, results and content according to the specific person that's that's actually looking at it. Cool. Thank you. And are some of the, sorry, I could go on, but are some of the Disney things free? I'm one of these cheapskates who doesn't pay for Pandora and get um, music. No, you see, so this, this is the thing, Disney and, and <laughs> um, Netflix, it's a, it's a subscription service. So. Okay. Okay. I, I may have to break down and do some, one of them. <laughs> Thank you. you no, know, let me just say quickly, because I have this thing too, you know, it's like, I got to pay for this and this and this. And it's all going to add up. But I said, you know, when I was younger, I used to buy a CD a week. Every week, I would go buy one CD. Twelve bucks. That right. was like my thing. And so, yeah. you know, now for what I pay for that one CD a month, I basically have unlimited listening. And because I can download it to my devices. You know, and the cool thing is, is, as we've already said, when you download something to your library, it's just there. So you can play it on whatever device you want to. And, um, you know, you could, if you're using an iPhone or HomePod or whatever, you can just say to the S, play, blah, 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 and it'll, you know, boom, there it is. And is it just going to recognize your devices? You don't have to tell it. It's just going to know. It just knows. Once you sign in, yep. Once you sign in, you'll put in your username and password. It knows who you are, and it synchronizes everything for you. It just happens. It's like magic. It is magic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. And hold on here just a second. All right. Uh, up next, we have... Uh, Veronica, Veronica, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Have I arrived? <laughs> Thank you so much. My question, I've got a mini, Polaris mini, and I was kind of wondering about, you know, all of the processing involved in doing all of this streaming and playing this stuff. What does it do for battery life? What's well, not good with battery life? <laughs> <laughs> Your phone? Like my Polaris is plugged in right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, you should be able to, I mean, right. Like I said earlier, we're, we're like sharing screens on Zoom and, and uh -huh. then 
and you streaming audio and stuff like that. And that's you know, it's just gonna. Then let me let me add one thing to this. What I what I like, and I like everybody here on our panel anyway. The five of us, we're all gadget geeks. We all are. And I, you know, have always been looking for, for example, the perfect iPhone case, but I want to have a battery that I can remove. But I also want that battery to be around if I need to charge my phone. But what I recommend is that you think about if you're going to be traveling or, or, or out and about or on a plane or whatever, get a battery pack. Because if you're using an iPhone or your Polaris Mini, whatever device you're using, for example, I have a My Charge and it has a USB-C and a lightning cable on it. So if I'm going to be watching movies on the plane with a Polaris Mini or my phone listening to music, I can just plug it in right there so that when I get where I'm going, it's still charged. Yeah, this stuff is going to, it really is going to affect battery life. But it, again, it's going to on your phone too. Uh, if I'm reading a Kindle book that's showing a screen, um, it's different. If you're playing Apple Music, of course, you can close it. It does things in the background. It's not going to be as intensive. If you're showing a movie or reading a Kindle book, it will be a lot more intensive because it's, you know, it's using that visual interface as well. But again, it's going to be the same on, on your phone, too. So That's right. It's, and, and where you get your, <laughs> what's, what's funny is that um, you can actually use your, your Polaris to charge your phone. I was in the airport down to like 10% on my iPhone. And I it realized, I realized I, hey, I can power a monitor off my Polaris. So I bet it would charge my battery. So um, my Polaris, which had about 70% battery at the time, I plugged in my phone. It got me up to 100% before I boarded the plane. And so the Polaris was dead now. But that's okay. I needed my phone at that time. I didn't need my Polaris. So I just <laughs> go home and plug the Polaris in and we'll be good to go. Yeah, yeah. But no, back... Battery packs, I mean, I, I love them, and now you can use them on so many different yeah. things. So just, you know, think about that. Yeah, yeah. You can plug right in next to your seat on the airplane usually, you know, or on yeah. the bus. Yeah, that's true too. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's go ahead and do that there. All right, so uh, let's see. Phone number ending in one one. Hello, my name is Audrey. My name is Audrey Joy in New York City. Uh, hi, Jenny. We've spoken a few times and um, everyone else. Okay, so I have a couple questions. I don't have a Polaris yet, but I'm about to buy one in the next couple of weeks or so since we get our budget together. Uh, so my two questions are this. Number one, I have an artist development company and um, for YouTube, um, can you talk about, please, um, how if, if I could, when I make presentations to music publishers about my students' voices and whatnot, or my artists' voices, can I put all the videos together in like a grouping of like Jason and Jenna? And when I go to my meeting, I can say, this is Jason, this is Jenna. And... You're going to do that on the PC, but once you do it, you can access it on the Polaris... And you should be able to, again, if you have HDMI, you should be able to show them as well as hear them. So when you, when you open it on the Polaris, yeah, you'll be able to access the different channels. So you're, you'll probably create playlists or um, sub channels, or, but you can do that on YouTube, yes. And once you, you're not going to be able to create them and upload them using Polaris, but you'll be able to access them from there once you have. And you can organize it. So when I'm playing music live, I'll, I'll have a folder because I fire my backing tracks from my Polaris on the stage. And I'll have a folder that has 01, Hotel California, 02, Easy, or whatever. And, it, and then so you can just name them with a number in, for your presentation. You just go right down the list and fire one right after another. But something to and note. If you are playing videos and you want a video, you don't want to use our internal media player for that because you will not see the visual. You will actually want to use your YouTube channel so that you can uh, do that. Okay, so maybe I could just use my iPhone or something. Okay, my second question is, could you please, I'm, a, I'm also a professional musician and I'll wanna get recordings, you know, my original stuff to publishers or upload it to get copyrighted or whatever. Can you talk about 
um, making recordings, and then how would I get it to um, Google Drive or Dropbox or? Oh, that's easy. Oh, yes, go oh. ahead, Earl. Go, go yeah, to it. So I actually create music on a, it's, it's called a Tascam Model 24. It's a, basically it's a, a analog mixer with a digital recorder built in and nothing about it is accessible. I had to just memorize all the keystrokes and things, but I can do it. And when I've, after, when I'm ready to mix the music down, I, I just connect my Polaris and take the mains out of the mixer, plug it into the Polaris, and I can do everything, including if I want to fade at the end or whatever. I, I, and I could do it in either wave or MP3 format. And when I'm finished, I just um, copy and paste it between the, the um, whatever folder I'm, I'm in on the Polaris. And I, I can just go right over to Google Drive because we've got this Google Drive integration and um, browse to the folder where I want to put it, press uh, enter V for, for paste and up it goes. It's wonderful. Now, what if I want to make a live recording of um, either a performance or my sitting at the piano and playing live? How is that recording quality? You can the recording quality in the microphones on the on the Polaris itself. It, it's pretty hot, um, so anything that's really really loud is going to overload the microphones. I think by design because most people are going to use it for lectures. But what you can do is get some really nice binaural microphones, a nice high quality microphone, because there is a microphone input. And there, there you can actually, um, a lot of these mics, you can actually adjust the, the gain so you don't overload the input of the Polaris. And then, then it's just like any other digital recorder. Wow. Thank you so much. And keep up the great work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. And good luck with that Polaris when you buy it. Yes. <laughs> oh, it'll be very shortly. Thank right. you. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, next question was typed into the Q and A, uh, and actually, this is one I was thinking about asking myself because I don't know. Uh, will the Google Assistant work with the services? So, can I ask Google to play a song on Apple Music? Well, I can try it. <laughs> Give it a go. Uh, hang on. Let's see. Oh, you know what? It doesn't want. <laughs> no, it doesn't want to do that because I'm using external. This is the problem with trying to share and using external microphones. And yep, it's not going to work for me right this second. Um, the Google Assistant, as a rule, does that. So I would think that it would. Um, it does. So, for example, I can actually have it even open uh, Polaris applications like Open Notepad, blah blah blah. So I see no reason why that would not work because you can open both internal applications and Android applications. So I, um, and like I said, the Google Assistant as a rule does that. So I see no reason why it would not work, but I'm not able to try it right this second. Okay. All right, up next we have Pamela. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Pamela, and ask away. Where you are, okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. No, not you. Those other people. Can you hear me? We can. We can. Okay, sorry. <laughs> my, um, okay. My question is, um, I, I guess, first of all, I, I'd like to, uh, I appreciate just knowing that, um, that I can take a file, a music file and more easily take it from one, you know, like the Polaris to, to my, maybe my iPhone or whatever. Um, I mean, I wish I, I haven't gotten a Polaris yet, but I, you know, it's good to know that information. Um, but my question is um, with, with books, I uh, don't like carrying my iPhone around to listen to a book. So um, I'm, I, my question that I had asked before was whether I could download books onto, onto a Polaris. Now, uh, could I take a file and put it somewhere? Can I, right now I can just take a file and, and you know, put it on a disc, I mean, a thumb drive or whatever and take it to another machine to listen to. So then that, can I, can, can I, would I be able to do that with a Polaris? 
instead of U2 if I didn't have my U2? Um, it's going to depend on the type of file that you are asking about. Um, so BARD, for example, is going to be a different thing if you were the one that was asking about that. Because in the was. YouTube, there is an internal um, DAISY player key that is, that is used to play it internally. You're not going to be able to do that on the Polaris, and that again is sort of BARD's way of, of dealing with things because they have an Android app. You can download it to the Polaris. So what you'll do is you'll actually access it via the um, Bard mobile app. And of course, then you can take it with you from there. Um, I, I guess my question was, can I, okay. I understand that I need, would need to use Bard from my phone or whatever and, and that. I, no, no, I, you can use it from the Polaris. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I guess my question is, could I take a file, a file that I have downloaded, um, you know, like a, oh, what are they called? DB, whatever file. And That's what I'm saying. You can't yeah. because you need the internal key for the, and, and we don't actually include that in Polaris. So the only way that you can use, do the digital talking books is via the Bard mobile app. The Braille files, you can. Oh, so there's no way that I could take a file and and listen to it on another machine because I can't download it. Well, let me ask you, man. When you're talking when you're talking about files, are you specifically are you specifically talking about digital talking books? Yeah, she was talking about the DB um, folders. I am I am specifically talking about digital talking books. Okay. I really would I want to okay. be able to do that still. You actually really can't on most devices these days for Bard. Um, Bard has basically changed their way of doing things, so they're more like okay. Apple Music in that you could access them on cross platforms but you can't take the actual folders from one machine to another. But again, that's, that's more Bard ways of doing, Bard's way of doing things. They don't do the, um, how do I explain it? They use the app now, just similar to, you know, Disney Plus or Netflix or whatever, that it's just um, a different way that they've chosen to do it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of because, if I can have a little crack at it too, it's kind of like the, the authorization because they don't want you taking a file and maybe you know giving it to someone else to play so the only way that they're going to allow you to play it is within their app and you can't you can't remove it from the bard app okay um so i, I guess what i'm saying is i wouldn't be able to now with my u2 i can take and i can take a db file um, and I can actually put it in onto a flash drive and take it out of the machine. I mean, so to speak. So I wouldn't be able to do that anymore if I didn't have my YouTube, if I weren't, you know. Well, even with the YouTube, that's going to be limited. Like you couldn't play it on the Polaris. You couldn't, you would have to have a device that had that key, but no, um, the Polaris, like I said, because it only works with the Bard mobile application, you're not going to have that access. But at the same time, if okay. you have Bard Mobile app installed on all of your devices, like your iPhone, your Polaris, your Windows computer, uh, what do they call it, Bard Express or something, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you will have access to all that content on all those devices. It's just you can't copy the folders between devices. Mm, okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Okay, you guys. I apologize. I'm going to have to step away for like two minutes, so please continue without me, and I will uh, be back in a short while. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've got uh, three more hands raised. Um, Liel. Liel, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. We hear you, Liel. You're yeah. good. Okay. I I have a, self, a subscription in, uh, on the bookshelf. Can I okay. use the the bookshelf to to read uh, books? Yeah. yeah. So bookshare is wonderful because in the settings, if you go online, um, you can yeah. actually adjust the 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 display length um, 
in there. So if you have a 32 cell, like with the Polaris, you can just tell, tell Bookshare that I want to download my books to conform to that length of a Braille display. Um, so you can download using the book re this the way we you can do it through the, the web page, you know, through the, the web browser. But the way we yeah. suggest is to download the Go Read for Bookshare app. You can download your content there and as date in daisy format and then you can actually use the hymns uh daisy player quite seamlessly to to play that content um as you know because it's just it, it, you know. can i go read without the uh, okay so you can do you can use go read for the audio if you want to just get the audio part of it you know uh -huh. the text to speech or you can bring it bring up the books in your um Daisy, you know, the hymns Daisy reader, remembering that when you want to select a book and you go in there, you need to press space on it, not enter. Uh, that's important. Um, okay. Selecting the book you want to read with the space and then followed by enter, it'll bring it up and you'll have both synchronous uh, speech and text. And if you want to uh, turn off the speech and you just want to read it in Braille, you can just press uh, backspace with F2. It turns that toggles off the speech and now you just can use your scroll buttons to to navigate the text, you know, the book uh, in Braille exclusively. So it's a, okay. it's a wonderful um, way to do it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. Sure. Thank you, Leo. All right. Up next, we have, um, let's see, Edward Green. Edward, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, folks. Uh, thanks very much for the demo. I, th I think Jenny mentioned at the start that you have yeah, I think so. on the product maintenance agreement. <laughs> um, I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about that, what, what the product maintenance agreement gives you, and if there are paid upgrades, kind of how much they tend to be without a PMA. Okay, thanks. so... Jenny's the international person um, here. We, we can only speak for the U.S. here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, because we wrote our own uh, pro um, product maintenance agreement, and it's going to vary from place to place. So the promotion that I mentioned earlier is only in um, North America, U U.S. and Canada. And it is uh, a product maintenance agreement is basically our answer to an extended warranty. Um, so the Polaris comes with a one-year uh, manufacturer warranty. The Cube Rail comes with a two-year manufacturer warranty. The purchase of a PMA um, for for Polaris is going to extend you to two years. It's going to give you um, a, a loan unit if yours ever needs to be sent in for repair. They'll just exchange it, and then when yours is done, they swap it back again at no charge to you. Um, the, it gives, entitles you to an, a free annual cleaning. And it comes with a one-time accidental damage waiver. Um, what am I missing, guys? Well, let me just mention that with the accidental waiver, in order to get the accidental waiver, you have to have your PMA in place. And so we're yes. basically giving it to you. But after the first year, you have to renew it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, then if you, if you have an accidental damage, if it's only happened once, we will cover it, but you have to be in a PMA agreement at that time. And it's only once, the accidental damage. I mean, you can, yeah. so, but the PMA can be actually here in the US and Canada, it can actually be renewed. Um, so if you get your free PMA and you purchased uh, a Polaris, you can buy up to three, uh, two additional years on top of that you know, beyond that, you can be covered for like four years. Is that right, Thomas? Um, I think that's right. Yeah, it depends, it depends on the product, yeah. That is worth mentioning. You said U.S. and Canada, and we do have some international attendees, right. so please be aware that... that while you were, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. You were indisposed. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, very good. Thanks very much. And, and are the firmware releases and software releases, are they chargeable or are they, oh, are they absolutely free? free? Always free. Okay, cool. Thanks very much. And that's in the U.S. and Canada because that may not be across the board. No, it is across the board. It is across the board. Okay. Yes. Firmware are, is, is, has always been free and is always free. Thanks very much. Thank you. 
All right. Um, up next, phone number ending in 7768. I think we already had you on here, but I may not have lowered your hand. So 7768, you're live. Did you have a question? Yes, is... you did already have me on. Thank you. All right. So my mistake. All right. Let's go ahead and lower that hand. All right. Up next, we have Casey. Casey, go ahead, unmute yourself and ask away. I got it now. I got it now. My question has to do with when I updated the Polaris and went into all apps and my um, there are a number of 50s or the 50s oldies and 60s um, and a thousand hits so those th two or three of those apps they said they were outdated um i tried to play them they wouldn't play so how do you get rid of those if, if they don't work oh um, you can go into the uh, oh go ahead earl go ahead. Oh. Yeah, so this, that's that's actually an easy question. So you've got these, if I understand, you've got these apps and they're not working. You've downloaded them. You, you've get, you know, we're all into this trial and error thing, and trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. So when you find an app that does not work for your purposes, um, you can go in under all programs or, or all apps, and then select the one that you would like to remove, and then press Enter I. And that's going to bring up the properties for that app. And one of the options is to remove the app. It's under uninstall. Uninstall, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. the so, way, I think. You could do okay, it through the so, Play Store, but that's a way more um, long and circuitous route around, I think. Or in so the app on. manager. Or in the app manager. So go, yeah, so go, okay, okay. Um, but my other question had to do with, with Bard, with, with, it used to be uh, there was a menu that was that would show up that where it, there were supposed to be commands that worked with the various keystrokes that showed up, but they never worked. And I just I haven't used Bard since the update, but I just wondered if that if there's if there is such a menu or if it's just something that was put there and never fixed or just happened to be there. I don't. Um, they might have been Android keystrokes. And remember, we do have the control and alt keys next to the spacebar controls to the left and alts to the right. They, um, right. I'm not actually sure. Um, if they don't work, the best way to use BARD is, dealing with, is to use first letter navigation. That's the best way to do it. So if you need to use the forward key, type F, you know, things like that. Right. Um, that's going to be your most effective method for using the BARD mobile app. And, and then you can switch from app to app. If you have music play on one, you can go to another app, like from Pandora to Sirius XM, which is not the most accessible. But um, so is so is first letter navigation the easiest to do something like with Sirius, where they have recently played or yes, yeah, yeah. If you know what you're looking for, yep. First letter nav is a huge help if you know exactly what you're looking for, like that. It will be, as you just said, yes, when you know what you're looking for. And again, tab your way through, back tab your way through at first and, you know, get to know the app first. Because what you're going to find is if you, if, you, if you just start doing first letter navigation in an app when you maybe don't know how a button is labeled, you're going to be frustrated and think that it doesn't work. So the first thing that you really want to do when you, when you start learning to use an app is tab and space tab your way through it. Okay, that, that, that sounds. Good. Is there any way that we can be uh, influential with something like SiriusXM? Because a lot of blind people use that. All of them, but it's not not very exciting. Well, I've done that too, and they said we're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wondered if there's any way Hims could try to be more, uh, uh, you know. If that could be something we could be advocating for uh, because many of their buttons are not labeled. Some of them are. It depends on what they do when they update. Yeah. Yeah. That's see, that's, that's, that's the thing where it's serious XM is one example, but you know, we at Hims really could not do any more than a bunch of your blind friends calling them and saying, hi, I want to use serious XM and these buttons need to be labeled and they're not because they are the ones who have to do it. Okay. 
yeah, I learned a lot on this. Uh, I, I think I, I feel a little more comfortable um, yeah. trying to use it. Awesome. We're glad you're here, sir. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And we've got Pamela back. Pamela, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Um, do I understand that if I have um, some apps on my iPhone and get a Polaris, that my Polaris um, won't care where I'm using them, um, whether you know where whether they're on my phone or whether they're on my um, downloaded into my um, Polaris? So imagine, imagine using the same app. I'm going to use Apple Music as an example. So if you have Apple Music on your iPhone and you have Apple Music on your Polaris, okay, you can go on to Apple Music and let's say you're on your Polaris and you find a song and you want to add that song to your library or an album, whichever the case may be. You can, you can add that to your library. Then you close your Polaris and you're done with it. You grab your iPhone, and because you've added that, that <coughs> album to your library, Apple Music knows that it's there. So when you launch your iPhone Apple Music app on your iPhone, you can then go there and your library is going to look the same as it looked on your Polaris because the device, most apps, whatever you do on one device happens on the other as we think. And it's all because these apps are cloud-based. You know, it's all internet. It's all based up in, on servers. So whatever you do in one place, the same thing occurs on the, on the other place. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, I understand that. Um, my my question was, would I have to would I have to um, download those like Bard and uh, and Apple Music onto my Polaris if I wanted to use them on there? Yes, you yes. download the app from the Google Play Store. You download the app right. that you want to use, just as you would download an app from the App Store to your iPhone. The Google right. Play or is the, is the, yes. They're exactly. two entirely yeah. different operating systems. I mean, if you download I understand. something on your iPhone, it's not going to appear on your computer unless you personally download it. You will access the same services, but you do have to download the apps manually, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Sure. Sure. All right. So up next, we have Susan. Susan, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. Susan, we can't hear you. Yep, still muted. If you're on a computer, press Alt-A. PC is Alt A, Mac is Command Shift A. Phone is, I think, Alt six, Star Six. And if you happen to be on a Polaris, plus, press U for unmute and press Enter. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> All right. So while we're waiting for Susan, Tina, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey there, guys. You guys are doing a fantastic job over there. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Tina. Good to see you. You too. And well, you guys are taking one for the team. This is going on like two and a half hours. <laughs> wow. Um, let's see. I was just going to clarify that um, Bard is one of those services that doesn't sync across devices. You have to download, like, if you download a, you can sign into multiple devices, sure. But you'd have to download. That's right. Like, you if you want to have one book, you'll have to download it on each device and then you'll have to figure out where you're at in each book because it doesn't sync. But that's okay. one of the things that don't sync. In yeah, Bookshare even does that, but you're right, Bard doesn't. Right. Yeah, because they don't think it was programmed to, I think it was just assumed that people wouldn't have a whole lot of multiple devices, but, <laughs> you know, a lot of people do, so. 
Sure. I know they're updating a lot. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that because I, I do know they've contacted us actually, you know, about devices. They're updating even the old APIs as well as their apps and stuff. So it'll be interesting. I have a feeling they'll head more that direction in the future, but yeah, you're right. It doesn't do that right now. Yeah, I think they probably will because I think, I mean, people have, you know, iPhones, iPads. I mean, iPads, um, but it plays on, you know, streams and I guess they couldn't think of the stream, but anyway. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different stuff, but um, I've noticed they've actually made a bunch of improvements. You can now do a flick down gesture on some of the barred stuff on the iPhone and it gets you quicker around different things. But anyway, thanks yeah, a lot. They are very active. Thanks for the comment. Thanks, Tina. Thank you, Budges. I think I got unmuted. You yes, are. You did. You're you good are. to go. Um, hi, Sue. Yeah, I, hi, Mike. I worked with you and I got my um, Polaris from you last summer at the ACB convention. Um, Very good. Yeah, anyway, um, I have a question about uh, printers. How do you install a printer? Generally, you're going to get the application um, for that printer. Like, so if you have an HP, you can download the HP app. Um, one that we find that actually gives you access to a lot of them is called Hammer Print. It's by the Hammer Mill uh, Paper Company. And that actually has a lot of, of printers. Once you've done that, um, if you set it as your default printer, you can access it directly from the word processor. So um, you don't have to access the app to print. You just have to install it to get the correct driver. Do you know if the um, Polaris will work with the Canon MG5400? It will work with the Canon app, so I think yes. Okay, because I, so I would go to, what, what's the one again I need to download? Uh, yeah, just go to the Google Play Store and search for Canon printer. Uh, it should pop right up. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Susan. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Mike. All right. That's all the questions that we have for right now. Um, <laughs> we can, we got through it. Thomas. Woo! Oh no. Oh no. We've got another one. Guys. Oh, wait. <laughs> nope. We're not. Okay. All right. Marsha. <laughs> Marsha, go ahead and unmute yourself and talk because uh, as soon as Mike gets to talking, it's yeah, over. Um, yeah, hi. Um, I was kind of wondering the same thing that um, a couple of people before me wondered is I have Apple Music on my iPhone. Uh, when I go to the Play Store and get it for my Polaris Mini, will I see my library? Yes on right. no my same library that i have my own phone will you see yes. it on? yeah just sign in it'll ask you to sign in and if you sign in with the same username and password it'll pop it'll right. all be there you got i mean it's, it, it, what's happening is people are kind of overthinking this don't overthink it it's literally like magic it will just happen <laughs> when you sign in you'll see all of your things right there it'll just be there. Jenny and I actually did this last weekend because she called me and she said, how do I get this on my Mac? And we, we, we talked about it and all of a sudden she was so happy because all of her content and all the playlists that she had built on her Polaris all of a sudden <clears throat> showed up and it was like, boing, and there it is. <laughs> yeah, but that was more complicated. That's why yes, it, wasn't as, it wasn't as simple as signing in. You have to do some special settings, and that's what I didn't know. No, no, but it's not, it's not complicated on the Polaris. You just sign right. in. No. Uh, yeah, another question I had is, uh, yes, I have the Kindle app on my iPhone, but I was wondering uh, when I tried to read something on, you know, by... Uh, I tried to read something um, um, on a HIMSS device, and what I found when I tried to use the Kindle Fire itself was that when you would hit the upward panning button on, you know, the device. Yeah, I think it was the it was the 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 QWERTY, you know, XL. 
or the Polaris, one of those, the up panning would bring the display down and the vice versa would bring it up. <laughs> right. We go ahead, Jenny. That's an older version of Brailleback. And as far as the best thing to do when you're in Brailleback is actually to um, press space one, two, three and get help and find out what the keys actually do. But that's, that's it's actually. Oh, I did that, but it didn't say sh about, you know, that. Um, unfortunately, you have to, you'll have to deal with Google on that one. That's not us. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't think it was you. I mean, I was just kind of just wondering from whence this came. <laughs> yeah, no, if they define that, we actually don't, so. Mm. I mean, I do know that with Braille back, um, with Android, uh, dis Braille displays are not particularly robust. <laughs> well, what they did actually is um, they sort of assumed, see, we, we usually use, we use the left up scroll and the right up scroll and, and uh, you know, left, right, left down scroll and right down scroll. What they did is actually they used the left to pan left and the right to pan right. So it's actually intuitive in a way, but it's different than the way we do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so as long as you know that, okay. that's cool. So I just said, well, screw it. I'll just use the um uh kindle on my iphone to be done with it <laughs> well that also works <laughs> okay thank you very much thank you so thomas i just wanted to say before we go there are some people here next week's webinars are going to be pretty good do you want to quickly tell them what's happening next week sure uh yeah next week let me go ahead and pull this up uh so i do know that on friday uh, we're going to be having a really good one on math. So let's see. Where, here we go. Wednesday, social media. And Wednesday is Polaris and social media. And the, the emails for that are going to be going out here pretty quickly. So make sure to, to watch your emails for that. And uh, yeah, we'd appreciate it if you all showed up again for those ones. Yeah, and if so, you guys want to want to check out the um, what's what's out there in the future, just go to hymns com slash webinars. It's all posted right there. You have anything to say at the close out here, Jenny? Oh no, I was just going to say the the social media one is going to be sort of like this, more for consumers. Um, of course, you everyone's welcome to attend anything. So you know, please don't think that we're we're saying that. But on Friday, it is going to be about creating accessible documents. It will be geared towards education and geared towards teachers creating accessible documents for students. So just be aware of that. So the the sort of the focus populations are a little bit different. But of course, everyone is welcome to attend anything and and learn what you can. So uh, just a quick note on that, and we'll be looking forward to working with you next week. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you, guys. All right.